tonight we saw an epic main event for AEW in a show that I think in the end ended up delivering. Quite honestly, I think the fact of the matter is tonight the ladies had a better match just now against each other than the men did in the death match on a pay-per-view. I mean, tell me if I'm crazy. Tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like I'm not wrong, though. I feel like I'm right about that. But I thought tonight was about a 6 out of 10 show that was nice. Turned into, I don't know, potentially a 7 or 8. Amazing stuff. We're going to talk about it. We're going to bring in Jake DeMarco. We're going to have your... Uh, well, your donos are going to play if they are there. If you guys have any for us tonight, we love them. Uh, we're going to take your phone calls. And if you're new to the channel, why aren't you subscribing? We're live after every single WWE, AEW Dynamite. This is the Joe Cronin Show. And that's John Moxley looking like he's taking a dump in the middle of the ring. Let's talk a little wrestling. I can't believe I saw a good main event. WWE. Anyway, tonight's AEW, we're going to get into it as I open my Discord up, and I get um, Discord loaded up, and I turn down the volume on the AEW TV, uh, TNT channel. Tony Schiavone was kind of hilarious tonight in a couple of different ways, a couple of different reasons, but let's... Uh, Let's bring in Jakey Poo. He's unmuted. Yay. What's up, Jake? Happy St. Patrick's Day. What's Happy St. Patrick's Day. I almost forgot about that all day because I was so busy, but I did have corned beef and all that other stuff, so that was the good part about the day, you know? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Right away. Oh, my God. Out of nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Thunder Rosa. It's Ryan Romano. Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. Man, one of our favorite interviews. Ryan Romano, Thunder Rosa, main events AEW tonight with Britt Baker, and they absolutely did a goddamn good job. And right now, Jake DeMarco, the only question I have for you is, well, first of all, thank you to Ryan, Ryan Romano for the 25 Venti Cinco. Thank you so much, Ryan. That's a big drop for the first drop of the night, and your name's going to go right on the top, dog. Jake, was this match... Better than anything you saw on Revolution. No, this topped Revolution for me. Yeah, is it better than everything you saw in Revolution? I think it was better than everything that I saw in Revolution. Though, had had the explosion gone off properly, I think that would have been oh, really? such an emotional moment that that would have topped wrestling for this year. <laughs> I really think that that could have been because I like Eddie so much and mm -hmm. seeing him go ahead and put his life on the line. Had that not been a dud and that really played off quite well, that would have been. I mean, it would have written both of them off. And now, now we got to see if Eddie's injured. But... Yeah, but I mean, I mean the match. I know the emotional moment. Holy crap. Ryan yeah, Romano is here again. Wow. Ryan Romano's going off in the chat on Super Chats right now. Ryan Romano likes cock. I'm going to say it again. Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa. What's up, Ryan Romano? Man, oh my God, dude. 50 bucks dropping already from Ryan Romano. Ryan, man, I can't thank you enough for that. I'm hype. I'm so happy for Thunder Rosa. I'm so happy for Britt Baker. Even the other girl, which I never remember her name. Jake, what's her name? Rebel slash Reba. Reba. That one? Re what, her name's Well, they, they Reba? call her Rebel, and then it says not Reba, but... They, okay. they go back and That's forth, really so. fucking weird. I don't know why they do that. Maybe that's why I can't Well, because her, her name, name is supposed to be Reba, but now she calls it Rebel, so that's oh, the, the play okay. on it. I get it. Okay. Well, she's... It's it's silly, but it works. And she, she really did, is Again, working. very well. She's she's one of my favorite, like, duo acts, like the comedy, but uh, in that 
non-serious managerial role. She's right. one like of she's my not, top people dude, she, she works so well with this. Exactly. It's like she's not really good in the ring, really, but as a manager taking bumps and stuff, she's really done a great job with that. She really Every has. Every time, she just is the highlight of whatever moment she has to take, whether she's going in the trash can or you know the way she's taking the bumps from, from Thunder Rosa tonight. Like She's always just really enjoyable, so she's a huge positive. I, I just, yeah, I can't say enough for her, man. She's, I mean, listen. I, I can't I say enough for what the women did tonight. I, I think that was yeah. more brutal than anything we saw on Revolution as well, honestly. Yeah, the, the death match, this was more death than the death match. Exactly. This was more brutal and painful than the death match, the exploding barbed wire death match, and the street fight with Sting and Darby. So right. And, and the they, thing about These it, women killed themselves tonight. I give them the utmost respect and credit for doing that. I mean, she had thumbtacks in her side, in her boobs, in her back, in her ass, everywhere you can imagine, yeah. trying to apply this lockjaw submission while laying still in the thumbtacks. Thumbtacks suck. Oh, they, yeah. are, they are horrible to work with like that because there is no good way to take it. Yep. There is no trick. There's no Just make sure they pull them all out so you don't get an infection. That's the only it, trick. It always cringes is. me out when the referee's counting because there's always thumbtacks that spread around. And as the referee's doing this, I always see the thumbtacks nearby, and I'm like, oh, God, he's going to slam his fingers <laughs> down into a thumbtack. And there was one on the three count right under the ref's hand, if anybody saw it. So, man, listen, guys. Super I, close. I, I yeah, could, you always see him fly up in the air, too. They bounce like it's a trampoline. Oh, yeah. You know, they, they fly up. You know, By the way, that's a sick hat you have there. That's a good hat you got. That's right. Kiss me. I'm not Irish, but I am celebrating St. Patrick's Day. So. Oh, really? I'm only, well, I'm 30% Irish. I'm sure I've got some little dabble of it in me. I'm, I'm quite a mutt. Well, a I'll put a dabble of it in you. Yeah, hey, there we go. That's what I would be if I did that. Bath bathroom break. Yeah. We'll make, we'll, we'll give me a little bit of Irish DNA quick. Lee is like 70% Irish and I'm like 30% and then Scottish. So, I mean, the two of us mixed our kids are over half Irish. So I guess we get the right, you know, but to, listen, today you I was so right busy. Mix. I was super busy today, man. I was doing a lot of things, a lot of work. I didn't get to do a lot of things. So it was so nice to come home. I literally worked all morning and all day and all afternoon and everybody. And I, it was so great to come home and, you know, basically within an hour, this show came on. And to sit here and watch the show tonight was so fun because it started out really good. Then it sort of like felt like an, it, it dragged for a while, actually, then. And then this I was this spoiled, banging. Joe. I was very spoiled with this show, unfortunately. Oh, yeah? I avoided the spoilers. Oh, I man. Said, I know, but, oh, thank God I wasn't spoiled. Oh, my God. You were spoiled. But I did right. give people the option. I'm like, hey, it is taped. So if you do want to see it, I'm not going to post the spoilers themselves, but I'll share the link. You know, if you want to click on it, that's your own thing. Because some people get upset to find out, oh, that was taped after the fact. And like, I could have watched something else. And, you know, I don't, I don't blame them. People don't always enjoy it if it's not live. So I get it. But uh, I, I still thought it was a pretty pretty entertaining show tonight from top to bottom, even knowing most of what was going to happen. Sadly, I got it sent to me in a, a screenshot and a DM, so I didn't know what the image was. You open it, and you're like, oh, great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's I hate what when people do so. that. Yeah, It's like, what do you do? People do it to us Well, a lot time. of times people send me news, so I just, like, you scan through the article yeah. really quick, and then you're like, oh, that's that's what, you know, it was just all the, I, I thought it was matches announced, and then I'm like, oh, that's all the results. Cool. Right. <laughs> So, hey, it works out, but um, still an entertaining night. Uh, not really a bad match tonight at all. I like MJF's promo. That was stellar, top notch from him. Everything he said elevated every single person in his stable. I like the name. I, I'm enjoying what they're doing with them. So, hey, um, you know, I think this is going to work well. I like the pinnacle. I, I think it's catchy. And he's basically the antithesis of what the inner circle is going to be now is they'll be the face group. Obviously, this will lead to some type of big match, uh, either another stadium stampede, blood and guts is more likely, but we'll see something from them. So mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest uh, news story of the day, unfortunately, just not to, to get off AW, but we keep telling people, you know, we'll let you know about wrestling tickets for WrestleMania. Now they are going back on sale, I guess, Friday now, the 19th, Friday. They were supposed to go on sale already. That didn't happen. We didn't know if they were going to add more seats, take away seats, but I guess it's going to be 25000 a night total. So that's what they're going to have. Mm. As much as Vince tried to increase and have the largest show to date since the pandemic began, that doesn't seem to be the case. So for whatever reason, they're just not allowed. And this is coming from you know, several uh, sources outside of Jacksonville and within it. So it, it's legitimate. 
Well, so they're going to have 25,000 seats. So if you really desperately are planning on going, you know, get ready to, to get those tickets as fast as you can because scalpers have most of them. And the one thing that, you know, Brian Alvarez has said and a few other people mentioned, which we've even said last year, had people been able to go, they didn't know what was going on what night. And that was the unfortunate part of it when they were going to split it into two nights. We're like, all right, well, this is taped this year. There's not people. It's not bad. But this year, the way the booking is, what if you do want to see a specific match? You know, I'd really want to see Drew McIntyre go against Bobby Why Lashley. are we talking about WWE right now? I don't understand this. Like, what the well, I'm fuck I'm just saying, we doing? always told people we would let them know about fuck the Mania. Fuck WWE. Ticket. Fuck Mania. That, like, that, that was always our, you know, <laughs> we, we try and let the audience stay in tune with it. I know, so. man, but I'm going to I'm gonna snap in a minute. Like, fuck this. Like, All right. Well, that was our, that was our one little <laughs> There you go. WrestleMania. Off. Fuck them. Like... Man, we just saw fucking women tear each other apart in the main event. No doubt about it. That's our only little side off. That's our one distraction note. So people that are waiting for tickets, get ready Friday. You got if you get anybody got their stimulus, there you go. Hop on, get yourself time, you know, a travel package and have fun. I ain't getting that stimulus. I'll tell you that. This is Owen two now. <laughs> I didn't get it either, so don't feel bad. Jesus, you didn't get it? Nope, neither did Courtney. That's they suck. When this are they, they gonna, when are you gonna get it? I guess we're not now. I You're don't gonna know. get it. Why wouldn't you get it? <laughs> I, yeah, you I literally know. have to get it unless you. Make I go it. on the IRS website and it says uh, not enough information or you don't qualify. That's, That's what, what it says, says to now. me too. But it should you should get it. You didn't make like what the fuck? There's no way you shouldn't get it. I know. I certainly you know my ten grand a year I make is over that limit. <laughs> my my two hundred twelve dollar a month uh, disability check. That, That's why I got. I'm one, breaking the bank, baby. That's why I say I got one for three. You know, I got the first stimulus. I didn't get the second one or the third one, but. I just told Leah, I was like, hey, I'd take it as a bonus, the first one. You know, we're lucky enough to have that. I can't believe we got that. So, screw it. I don't know. And I think you might be able to claim the second one in your taxes as well. Maybe, but I'm staying away from those as long as I can <laughs> until I make about $30,000. Um, so, AEW. So, yeah, this was, a, this was a good night, a good opening. Um, you know, the, the Cody match was pretty, pretty kick-ass to start. Um, I, I enjoyed the intense action back and forth. What you expect from Penta with the Lucha style, but I feel like they worked well together and everything meshed quite well. Uh, you know, you saw a couple crazy, you know, back and forth into the crossroads. I like that. And they tried to say like, oh, Cody, you know, got the upset here, but it seemed like a pretty definitive win to me. Right. Yeah. I, 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 well, OK, so here's my critique of the Cody match. First of all, Cody and Penta was was great. Nice opening match. That was really I thought a great match, but the only thing, so my criticism of it is I liked it. It was like my, one of my favorite things of the night. It was like a 7.5 out of 10 match. Thumbs up, really liked the match, but there was a little, my little couple quick cheeks are that, you know, Penta was really broken down at some point in the match. Like he was like beaten down to where he was like, kind of like, it looked like he wasn't going to be able to survive it. Then, then he gets rolled up and loses. Instead, and, and he's like, but right away he pops up like, oh my God, he didn't pin me. And it was like, that didn't really make sense with how fatigued and tired and beat up he was that suddenly he gets rolled up and then he shoots up like, oh, I was, how the hell did he beat me? That's usually something that happens within the first five minutes of a match. Usually you don't see a roll up after 10 minutes and then the guy pops up and goes, wait, what? Like that didn't make any sense to me because Penta had been selling this like fatigue and injury and, and breaking down. And then on top of that, he attacked Cody's shoulder after the fact, but it's like he should have just kept attacking it during the match then. If it was that much of a... Why yeah, was he so it, focused it, on it after the match ended? That was the thing I was going to say to you is that, oh, good, he finally targets the limb yeah, after the after match. After the match. Why? Why after? If, you, if you, you already saw it, it's an obvious injury. It's been made apparent. They showed the replay of the ladder match where he got struck with the chair. You know, it, it, why? Where's the psychology there to be used? Yeah. Oh, he quickly. Oh, he started. You know, he he gets back and like. Oh, he's targeting his bicep and his shoulder briefly when he goes to the floor and he does that little dive. And I'm like, all right, so he's gonna go through the table, big whoop. But besides that, that was it. That was the only spot that he I saw that he focused really on his shoulder. So right. Um, you saw them. You know, do the figure four, and I'm like, forget his his. You know, I don't know. I, it wasn't a bad match. It was like weird. Said, it was just it was fun enough, to watch. But... It just kind of didn't make a little sense at the end. That's all. Yeah. The, yeah. the roll up made didn't make a lot of sense to me at the end. Then, Solid for the opening. Nice opening match though, but it was entertain <clears throat> entertaining match. It just kind of ended weird and didn't. It made Penta look stupid for not attacking Cody's shoulder. It also make it also didn't make sense that he was just so lively and awake at the end of the match by a roll up. It would have made sense that he got rolled up. I don't know. It just I didn't see a roll yeah. up. Why that? 
I don't understand that, but whatever. I, that's what I'm saying. It was it was more of a definitive win, but they're trying to say it was stolen, and and I would have done that a different way, but. Still not not a bad match. Could have been much more disappointing with these two. At least it gives us somewhere to go if they want to continue the feud. They can always amp it up from here, too. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just don't know. what did, did Cody absolutely need to win? Like, the more I think about it, was this a, a really necessary moment for Cody? You know what I, I would have liked to see? What's that? Right now, I'll tell you right off the bat. I wish that Penta had... I wish that the referee had either gotten hurt or taken out at the very end... Or maybe Penta pulled the turnbuckle pad off, and then Cody Rhodes came charging in at Penta, and he moves, and he crushes the the exposed steel in the shoulder. Or Penta used a weapon on the shoulder, and then afterwards hit some kind of finisher, and then cover, got the one, two, three. And Cody's left in the ring kind of like, oh, you beat me, but I'm also fucked up, and wow, you cheated, kind of. So like maybe there's more to be done here. But with a roll-up, yeah. it's sort of just like, you know... I, Cody winning. That's on not a really roll-up? cheating. That's I don't view a roll up as cheating. That's what I'm saying. It, yeah, it, it, it's not an underhanded tactic if he's not grabbing the tights with the roll up or elevating his feet on the ropes. You know. Like, Wait a minute. Let me so, stop. Is Cody supposed to be the heel? No, he came out the face side. Right. You know. Well, he comes out the middle, so he's always a tweener. Really. I mean, Cody doesn't have a defense. No, he's just God, so he's coming face, out the middle. But he, but realistically, he's supposed to be the face. So. So then, Kenny Omega is currently the god of wrestling, so according he, to Don Callis. That's right. Which, by the way, what a promo and impact it was. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get to that in a minute too. Oh, the, the impact promo with Rich Swan was fantastic. Yeah, love that. Love Don Callis. Everything he did tonight, and he does. Well, but that comes up next, and I loved it. He he really tore apart the Young Bucks, and I was damn entertained. And really, he should not. He should be getting his crap torn in by the Young Bucks, but that's not the case because they just can't do it on the mic. It seems right. Um, there was so many, you know, these are not the bucks we saw in Japan was, I'm trying to think of some of the other lines he said to them too. There's, there's nothing elite about you anymore. Um, help me out. Oh, well, it's weird. they the, said the, the same thing we just said last week. We said, dude, look at the young bucks from their ring of honor and new Japan days. Yeah. And look yeah, at what we've been getting. They reiterated everything we criticized. We said this last for. week, last week. And then they like literally <laughs> Tony's said, listening. I'm telling you. I mean, I don't know about that, but, uh. If he is, Tony, <laughs> why haven't you hired me? I mean, here we go. And you could hire Jake. Jake is a great water boy. That's right. You have no yeah, idea I, what you're missing, Tony. I swallow. And and by the way, Tony, speaking of Tony's, other Tony, Shivani, has a Kickstarter for his comic book. Why doesn't he just go up to Tony Khan and be like, yo, Tony, instead of making the people pay three hundred grand, yo, how about you help me with the comic book and I'll give you 20%? Why doesn't he do that? I'm yeah. That, that's a, I'm just at. We don't know the answer. I'm just. We don't either. A, I mean, there could be a million things. It's a rhetorical question. Or, yeah, I don't know. It's just you know, I'm just throwing it out there. You know, maybe go to the guy who has a billion dollars sitting right next to you. Multiple I don't know. billions. Yeah, and do your comic. So Don Callis was was great there, and you know he, he's like, oh, you're you're the one responsible for changing Kenny, and he's like, I did change him. I made him better, and now he's a god. And, uh, you know, there's there's nothing elite about any of you guys. It, it was just really good. Cutting into the Young Bucks, just really entertaining. Like this as well. Jade comes out, fantastic. Oh, yeah, I love Huge Jade. Of hers. Everybody wants to see her. Perfect. I just I was disappointed in the match. Be, be, it's good to see a squash match once more. I wish we saw one squash before her debut, technically. I wish this match happened before she teamed up with Shaq. In reverse, and I would have rather seen her get more of a competitive match, but I don't think I don't know if she's capable of that yet. So this might yeah. be all she's able to do at this point in time. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I just think it's keep it simple. Get her out there. She needs to be out there somehow. She looks dominant. I actually 100% enjoyed it. I thought it was perfect for her. Just keep, you know, if she does this two or three more times, even I'm fine with it. Um, until they put her in some kind of rivalry feud, uh, next thing that's going to happen type of deal. Holy and shit. When was the last time you seen women get busted open through the head? Like that. I was not expecting this for a hardcore match. I can't believe Brit actually agreed getting put through thumbtacks. This is women's wrestling AU. We need yeah. more of this. I got to tell you, Picharo, they nailed it. They, they didn't they didn't have the it wasn't like the greatest match ever. They could have it could have been better, which is crazy to say. But 
That being said, I never expected the blood to be that crazy. So the fact that they did that, I was fired up for this match, man. This was really good. This was really a fun. I mean, dude, the te- the, we just watched a death match on a pay-per-view, and this felt like the makeup. This felt like the, sorry, guys, let's give you this. And they did it with the women. So talk about putting the women on the map. This is the night where Tony always brags about the women and how good it is, which is a lie, quite frankly. But, like, this is the night where Tony this Khan is the night where he's get on there, say, Tony. Yeah, this was good. This That's was what women can do in AEW. Tonight, Tony is the night to come on and say and tweet out, that's what women can do in AEW, and that's why they main evented tonight. So many times the WWE women have main evented fallen short, whether at WrestleMania or something else, um, other than back in the day with Lita and Trish. They actually did a good job on that first Raw main event way back in the day. But tonight, that's one of the best main event women's matches we've ever seen on TV, on television. I mean, you know, Trish and Lita... What else is Luke there? Luke said, what about the match with Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai yes. in that street fight? I actually, so the rhythm of I that I don't know match, if that was the main event, though. No, it was. I think it was an opener. I don't, yeah, I think, I don't think it opened as well. I, so, don't remember, I don't think it closed the show. I think emotionally and as a match, that Tegan Knox match might have been better than this. As far as a rhythm and a match goes, okay? But this one was more brutal, okay? So that one was hardcore, both of these were, but I would say that that one was more, this one tonight was more brutal. This was the most hardcore main event women's match I've ever seen on mainstream TV, ever. But I would say Tegan Knox, and I believe that was a pay-per-view, by the way, of Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai. That Dakota Kai. I think Kai, the street fight was, was actually on NXT itself, but I'll double check. I think it's a pay-per-view, the good one, but maybe you're right. I don't know, or maybe he's right. I don't know. But I would say Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai had a better beginning-to-end wrestling story match that was exciting. I'd have to really watch them both back up against each other. And remember, this one had the unfortunate um, disadvantage of having commercial. And Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai didn't. They got to get in a rhythm. Yeah, you're right. Portland. I don't know why I doubt you. And by they the way, a, another match. Uh, and a crowd, too, Jake. At, what, 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 what's the date? Because they had a crowd, too, didn't that was, they? That was Portland. That was the last before... Um, the pandemic the coronavirus, no, or was that? Or it might have been the first with the. I, I swear to God, there was. I think their second match was no fans, but I think their first one that was fire was fans. Could be wrong, but if either way, it was really good. I, and, and 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 was that this year too, Jake, or was that last year? Tegan Knox and Dakota uh, Kai was last this year. Was from Takeover Portland, so that was the year before. Right, that was last February or January, not this. It was twenty twenty. It was it was yeah. right before the pandemic. Yeah, right before the pandemic started. That was the last pay per view with people. Okay, so that match was the best women's match I would say of twenty twenty. Yeah, their other match their, that they had was on NXT TV. The street fight was on Portland. This tonight, though. This tonight is the best women's match of 2021, and I would dare to say that we'd have to look at it, and we'd have to start brainstorming and getting other people's opinions and takes, especially from stuff that happened in Impact Wrestling over the last uh, 10 years, but over the last 10 years in women's wrestling or ever, this is one of the most hardcore women's matches in the history ever of women's matches. On television, yeah. And, And on TV, no doubt, on TV. Yeah. I mean, they've had, I've seen some really screwed up stuff on like CZW and right. things of that nature where people are but just see, filleting like, their foreheads. Yeah, if you fillet somebody and it's just like whatever, at a certain point. That's not wrestling. I, that's I, just, yeah, you lose, like wrestling story, wrestling, that, that score goes way down. Hardcore brutality goes way up. But if you don't have the other two things, I just it's pretty much a wash it loses in my opinion. That's why Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai, like their first match in 2020, that match that was so good. Yeah, I feel like it was a better wrestling story, but tonight was the better hardcore match, and that's amazing. So yeah, Dakota Kai had the better build because of everything that you know their their friendship, the betrayal. These two have just hated each other to the beginning. Oh, the so. story's been good too. Yeah, and you know the other thing is I'm gonna watch this match again and probably think more into it. And let's just say this: these women tonight put on a better show than anybody. In the Revolution pay per view, I paid fucking forty dollars or fifty dollars. I paid fucking fifty dollars, right? Revolution fifty bucks, and there was a death match, and there wasn't anything death about it. It might it should have been called 
boom boom fireworks match. <laughs> That's what it should have been called. And tonight, this Beware was a death sparkler. match. This was a death match, and this was a th- this was a sorry, guys. I think to everybody and the this women. Was- I'm almost picking 15 up. minutes. It was 14:58, even with the picture in picture. Right away, you, you get that huge air raid crash on the stage on Rosa. Then they hit, you know, back into the ring, and you get that, you know, chair shot that misses. And then she throws the chair right into Britt's face. And then she hits Rebel in the gut with it. And then it just turns into like total chaos. Rosa gets that huge slam, and they she just keeps bashing Britt with the chair and hard chair shots. Yeah. She's doing it flat back, so she's doing it right. But it's still, they are hard chair shots. They get back to the outside. They're beating the snot out of each other. They set up the table, and you know that's what. Then they kind of tease it. We get more chairs shots and chairs thrown into the ring. We get that huge suplex at one point. Um, what else was there? We get the ladder brought in, and that's when uh, Thunder Rosa slams Britt's face into it. She picks up the ladder to choke her, and you know that that's when Britt finally comes up. She's bleeding. Uh, what else here? Um, now you go ahead, and Rosa goes ahead, and she's she's attacking where Britt's bleeding from, right. and then she gets hit with a super kick. So now she's bleeding, and she gets the flatliner as well mm-hmm. onto the ladder. So that was crazy. And then Rosa hits a huge Death Valley driver onto the floor on the ladder. It was like <laughs> I was like, what What are you doing? That was insane. That could have ended the the match right there. We the suplex into the chairs was fire. That highlight package at the end of the show was beautiful. Yeah, like you said, the DDT on the chair, um, the, the big neck breaker. What else? All the the power bomb onto the tax, and even that she kicked out of the lock jaw on top of the tax. As I mentioned earlier, the big super kick that followed, and then it, it was just you know building and building, and then of course she gets that huge fire thunder driver through the table, pins her, gets the win. Awesome match. Rosa gets to celebrate. She she's in serious serious agony and and just hurting like a son of a gun. But you could see her so emotional. I can't Huge wait to win. watch it again. I'm gonna watch it again after we're done tonight. I, I am as well. So violent, but so well told. Every every moment made sense. Every every spot fit with the story that they were telling. They weren't just doing shit to do stuff. They weren't just like, well, now we got to do the chair shit because we haven't had done any chairs. They, they were escalating. And as they went around the ring, they were collecting their tools and it built up to the next spot. It built up to the table spot. It built up to the ladder. They didn't I, have a hundred things going on I at once. They went from was, spot to spot well executed. I thought it was a little bit too much of a station to station. I'll actually go the other way. I, a little bit. Just a little bit. I didn't bit. think it was as bad as, as and near egregious as we've seen it previously, where it's where it's exceptionally obvious, like, okay, no, now because we have to do this, this. I think they flowed to everything so well that it didn't feel like like you said, a, a you know, a science fair going station to station. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't it just wasn't like as far as flow, that's why I think Dakota Kai and um, like I compare it to that match, that had a little more flow and build the right way. And weird. This had more of a station to station, but it wasn't as. But it was really good. It wasn't that. It was. I'm telling you that it's like one of my favorite matches of the year. So like it's, this was really good. Like I give this. I, I think this women's match is an eight point five to a nine out of ten. As I'm far at as eight point five for this, yeah, absolutely. Very sweet. I think if they did nail those, like like if they felt more like a. Fl- a flowing wrestling match, I might have given it a nine or a nine five. But we're because, at six and a half stars. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I was at a six for the show all night until this main event. Now I'm going to give the whole show a seven five or an eight because I, I think I'm at a seven for the whole show with you. Right. Maybe maybe I could go seven five. I, I got to go back. I wasn't thrilled with Angelico and Phoenix's match. It was that was a bit too much of the spot to spot to spot thing for me. Like, oh, we got to get through the death roll, and now we got to do the the pinfall, pinfall, pinfall trades, and then all the kicks and kicks, and then it just it felt like there were pinball, you know, uh, bumpers knocking around a ball around the ring. That, how about our love, Scorpio Sky's heel promo? What do you think about that? That was, was right. good. He made sense. Um, he, you know, he's gone ahead and and. and trying to make a name for himself and said nice guys finish last he doesn't you know want to stand there anymore and be forgotten about and now he's making a name for himself i thought it was short sweet straight to the point seemed believable and i thought it worked pretty well you know um simple motivations but it explains what he's doing what he went through and why he's doing it yeah i thought it was okay i thought it was pretty good i think the promo of the night 
goes to either MJF or Don, but I'm going to give it to MJF tonight. I'm going to give Don Callis was great, but MJF was stellar. I one of the things that didn't work for me that I hated, and not to sound like a cornet, you know, bandwagoner and all, but the Miro program program going on here is freaking unbearable at this point. Oh my god, dude! I I, I, I even almost, Miro I doesn't want this match it. to happen because he knows that it, that it's terrible. Yeah, this was this was. I mean, I don't even. I honestly had nothing to say about it because it was just nothing. It Shit just, bomb. It, it was just awful. Happy St. Patrick's Day Woo! for Leaf Clover oh! was an okay night until that main event. Britt really earned her stripes tonight, but Rosa brought the fire. Yeah. Both deserved that standing ovation. Seven tenths tonight, AU's women carried tonight's show. Absolutely fire. Uh, Soundwave92, thank you for the $20, man. Thank you so much for dropping that much money on the show, man. I mean, Ryan Romano is still beating you out for top dog, but but Soundwave, there are nights where you carry the donos, so thank you, sir, for that, man. It's great that I met him in real life. It's been a while, man. Can you believe it's been this long since I met you? Soundwave. And, and now coming. they moved those AEW shows that were coming up next month to September, September. October, I believe. Uh, they moved to Boston and Philadelphia and D.C. Oh, shit. That's actually the same order they did the first ever shows in. I think. Yeah, they were going back to the Wow. Ryan Romano is back again with another Venti Cinco. Mucho dinero. Anyone bought tickets, they do carry One over. One more time. Thunder Rosa. And yes, Joe, you know I like it a lot. Rain on me, Ryan Romano! I can't wait to get the Ryan Romano donation back working again. That's going to oh, be great. I know. Classic. Man, um, Ryan Romano again. He is the top dog. He's dropped three twenty-five dollar shots. He's up to seventy-five tonight. Ryan Romano is a friggin' beast. If you see him in the chat, draw a pee pee in the chat for Ryan Romano. Thank you, Ryan. Guys, what do you think about the show tonight? Leave it in the chat and let us know. Out of ten, what did you think of tonight's show? And real quickly, I got another one for you right now. Here it comes. Oh, it's it's the Rycak. You wanna fucking do it? I'll kill somebody. Mike underscore Amelto took four dollars. AEW is better than Raw. Suck it, Tommy. Fat retard. Oh my god! Oh my god! What the hell, Mike Amelto? With the $4, a classic OG here on the Joe Cronin Show, and it's AEW Wednesday night. And you know what that means. AEW, once again, the best wrestling product going today, which is freaking amazing, man. And I really hope that tonight does a decent rating, especially in that main event. And here comes Slappy Fez now. Slappy Fez! <laughs> Slappy Fez tipped four dollars. Ryan Romano is a beast. Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa deserve respect. And AC Mikey is a punk bitch. Deliver my free dose, you weak ass troll. Damn, I don't know what that's about, but uh, Slappy Fez, Fez dropping the truth. Slappy Fez, good. Good to hear from you, my friend. And, dude, listen, these women tonight, I'm not going to stop sucking clit, okay? Because Britt Baker, absolutely friggin' beast. I mean, first Thunder Rosa gets busted open. She looks good. They're having a good match. Britt Baker then just friggin' like, dude, you would, I mean, I'm not even going to make the joke that everybody probably is going to make out there in <laughs> podcast land because I'll let, I'll let, I, I predict that within a week, Jim Cornette is being canceled again for the millionth time for making some kind of period joke. I guarantee you that happens, all right? Watch for it, because it's People going didn't to happen. People did know Shit, he was playing dangerously. Do you know what you mean, Colored? Do you want your cracker oh, back snapped again. by a black? I'm just kidding. Happy Saints Crackers Day. Happy Crackers Day. Hey, thank you, AJ Adams, man. It's good to hear from a black man who appreciates St. Patrick's Day. We love you. Actually, you know, a lot of my friends out here uh, took Irish names, too. Like, there's a lot of Coleman, a lot of... Uh, this is probably a Cronin uh, like you, uh, A.J. Adams, to be honest. A.J. Adams with the $5 becoming a $5 shit bum. Much appreciated, my friend. And, yeah, uh, it's working just fine, brother. Trust me. And I love yeah, you, Yeah, that brother. superplex they hit was really great, too. Yes. For the... Uh, uh, oh, into the chairs? Into the chairs? 
Yeah. Oh, Jake, that was... Oh, my God. I almost creamed my pants, brother. $100. Oh, shit. donation time, boy. Oh, my God. Good God Almighty. John Wills. What's up, Joe and Jake? It's been a while. Holy fucking shit, Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker fucking killed it in this match. Yes. Like they fucking killing each other. And the main event was so much better than AU Revolution pay-per-view. Much love to all, heart. Oh, man, John Wills with the heart. Man, it is St. Patrick's Day. We're being Hell granted yeah, a John. wish. That's why I got my little, you know, sexy hat going on here with John dropping a bomb. Just like Ryan chiming in before, everybody's celebrating. The stimulus is here, Jake. It's here. That's right. Everybody's here, believe. ready to celebrate. I can't believe it, man. John, wow, man. Holy crap. John, thank you, man. It also makes me feel better about my big fucking work day. I wrote. Uh, yeah, John right. Wills, I can thank only you. imagine. It was fun. I'm uh, really tired. But uh, John Wills, man, I thank you, brother. That is really nice of you, man, to drop $100 on a AW stream right now is crazy. That's um, He's now... The top dog. And speaking of top top dogs and people like John Wills with the hundred dollar bomb, there's Paul White right there. Um, <laughs> shout out to all the producers. The producers list has been updated. You should see your name there if you're a new producer. If you don't, you may have not selected the right tier. Even though you're paying thirty bucks a month, you may not have selected the twenty five dollar tier, which is a separate thing you have to do. Just double check on Patreon if you need to. And Leah has informed me that she's ready to record an epically long podcast with me finally after Ooh. a long hiatus. So Excellent. Leah is back and we have we want you guys to hit us with questions. And be episode two, if Joe wants to post it by then, but it'll be in his hands either tomorrow night or by Friday morning for uh, unapologetic and completely random for Patreon. So there Ooh. we go. Something else to look forward to for the weekend. Do you know who the guest is this time? It's a surprise. Oh, you have a surprise guest? It's not Rojas have, again. It's not Luke. It's someone different. Somebody different with Jake podcast. And if you missed me and Jake's podcast the other day, it's 35 minutes and it's it's fire. Go listen to it. It's 35 it's minutes. Excellent. The biggest complaint was, what the fuck? 35 minutes. I wanted three hours. So that's the I know. Weird. So we'll get some people some more later, but we'll, we'll get it going, guys. I was work. I won't be working as hard as I have been this week. Uh, other places and things. So we'll get it going, man. Um, but you listen, John Wills, boo. Thank you. Not John Wills. Thank you, uh, Jake. Um, what else from tonight? Have we not talked about that is on your mind? Um, well, let's go before Eddie Kingston and John Moxley's match. They had a hell of a backstage promo, I right. thought. It, it just worked really well. These guys are so charismatic, and, and anything they say is just damn entertaining. How could you not enter, you know, just enjoy them at all times? That That's really what it comes down to. No matter what they do, it, it's fun, and it's lighthearted, but it's serious in the same regards. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but... That really is the way they deliver things. They they started off joking, and then he got you know Eddie got serious and was able to take it to to a more sadistic place and a real level, and, and he got his threats out, and it, you know they made fun of Chad too bad, and and that was a good little joke, you know, obviously striking at the WWE stuff that they were doing. Uh, I forget what what the hell the name of it was the the Southern Wrestling Federation. There it was funny, but right. And um, what else did they say in this? You know, they oh, we should be on a beach sipping Mai Tais, but now we got to go to war again. And the Good Brothers, you know, you, you, you wasted good money on pay-per-view. We can't get your faces out of our minds. And, <laughs> uh, you have googly eyes like they used to have in kindergarten, you know, that kind of stuff. So it was silly. And then they got serious. I liked, I just, I liked everything they had to say here. Then we got Christian's promo after that. That was good. He said, some people might be disappointed, but I'm going to be the ultimate workhorse, outwork everyone, and I'm here to cement my legacy. I'm, I'm going to show you why I elevate other people and make you know a name for myself. Good from him. Now Eddie Kingston makes his entrance. He gets attacked immediately by the Good Brothers. As John Moxley kind of made a, a hint to before, they always have to try and get the upper hand and cheat. That's what they do. They destroy both guys on the outside when Moxley shows up all bandaged. Magic killer on the floor. You know, he's, he's beaten up. Kingston's getting into the ring. Bell rings, and Kingston's got a two-on-one scenario. Uses all the pride he's got and strength in the meantime, but 
the numbers game really takes him down for a while. He's eating, uh, you know, punch and punch and kick and punch. Finally, you know, he gives him a quick big boot, sends him to the floor. Kingston gets back in and surprises Anderson with a, a really nice exploder suplex. Fantastic. From there, you know, eventually we get Moxley in, and, and not too long after that, while Gallows and Kingston spill out to the floor, Moxley rolls up Anderson, gets the win, another quick roll-up. So this is far from over, especially with the attack afterwards. Ten-minute match, it was better than it had any right to be or how, better than how I thought it was going to be, honestly. Right. I expected this match to be kind of a clusterfuck, and that's not what it was. They had some good psychology, some some good moments between uh, the two guys trying to recover from the dastardly heels plan that they had to attack them beforehand. Made sense. Gets more heat, but in a good way. And it's interesting with the Young Bucks trying to make the save here and not agreeing to do the, you know, the Bullet Club too sweet forbidden door bullshit. But it was it was fun. It was it was enjoyable. It's it's odd that the Young Bucks even came out at all, especially with the Cows uh, promo that happened with them earlier with him kind of tearing them apart. He was saying how they don't have a spine anymore, and now they're coming out defending Moxley, knowing that Moxley's trying to kill Omega, and that's apparently their best friend. No? So it's just a very odd angle at this time, but I'm not hating it by any means. Um, no, it's not the real Ryback. It's uh, we had to throw him over the top rope. He, he doesn't yeah, have we got to get that son of a bitch out of here. Got to get Ryback out of here, man. Ryback always trying to take over the show, baby. Um, I, Listen, it's I, tonight... It, it's weird because it started out really well, like I said. Then I thought the show kind of was like, eh, you know, five out of ten. It felt like a long, a lot of stuff in the middle. But then, there what was did you think of, of the Sting stuff? Okay, this it's like, dude, I wonder, is it a joke now that Sting gets interrupted every single time? Is that the joke? <laughs> it feels I mean, that way. I'm so glad you mentioned that. What are they doing? What, what are they doing? I don't yeah. get it. I don't understand that. I mean, I why, why does he it? always have to be interrupted by? idiots at this point and everybody's coming out i i get what they're going for here but <laughs> lance archer comes out he's making a challenge to darby allen even though darby just challenged anyone from the dark order we find out later it's going to be john silver so that'll be a good match at least uh I, you know darby will retain but it'll still be a good match and he gave respect to Brody lee so big ups to him for doing that that's massive thank you for you know remembering him still everybody i mean dude when shaq did his tribute i was like what are you fucking serious and that Don't was stellar Gino? that oh, blew me mind away if i do what's my name Don Cacino. it's a whole new game Don Cacino. you want creamy goodness i'm, I'm your, your friend. friend say hello to my chocolate blend what a main event what rosa definitely deserves to beat cheetah and represent the au women's division properly really good main event show six tenths for me Alex Oli with the five dollars coming in, giving it a six out of ten tonight. Um, I, I gotta go higher, man. That women's main event really made me happy, and with some of the promos with MJF, the opening match and stuff like that, I'm giving them a little bit of a break. I think tonight I'm gonna go seven point five tonight. I thought this was a yeah. Uh, you know, the the main event really sometimes a main event of a two hour show can really make the show for the one thousandth time, guys. I didn't fuck my cat. I didn't come on my cat. I didn't <laughs> oh put my, my dick anywhere near my cat. Listen. Okay, Shane. Shane if you're Dawson. Saying it, it has to be true. Shane Dawson. There are some other people you may you may need to talk to a friend of ours, former friend of ours. Uh, you can learn how to get over these uh, situations, uh, Shane. If you or at least how to hide from the allegations until you cease and desist everyone. Ex well, yeah. I I I'm gonna I think I'm gonna frame <laughs> that cease and desist. It should be behind you. Well, like you know what if what if what if Catman ever goes on to be like super famous somewhere? I'm gonna I'm gonna be like I have a cease and desist from that guy, and I'm gonna hang it up, and I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna frame it, and I'm gonna sign it, and I'll, it's gonna be great. It could be worth something if he does something. Let's Speaking see. of worth something, I, hopefully at some point we'll Did get the chance to talk about to it. Joe? NFTs. Did you just the donate to Joe? Firebird. Thank you for the donation. Thank you, sir. And because you that donated, crazy. I'm going to feast. Wow, myself. We have a lot of donos coming in, in tonight. Bunghole. Yeah, we do. I see that. <laughs> Chiming in. I tried really hard to enjoy MJF's promo, but constantly got distracted. But his Donald Trump tan. Wow. Yeah, I mean that was pretty funny, uh, Firebird. I thought, but I didn't just get distracted by it. And I loved the way he started. Yelling into the mic, he really cut a promo that I loved. I fucking thought MJF's promo tonight was 
That was top notch. That was beyond stellar. And I think it was the makeup they put on him when they when he went out. I don't think <laughs> it was the tan stuff. It looked like the way it shined in the light, at least to me. Yeah. But I didn't find it too distracting, but it certainly was recognizable. Britt went ahead and tweeted Britt Baker. She said, the bad news is you forgot to kill me. Face of the women's division. And wow. she's got a picture of her just covered in blood, baby. So That is damn awesome. Damn, good on her. Wow. Is Thunder Rosa fully signed with AEW? I don't know if she is yet. I I thought she better be that she has a you know she always has a working relationship, but I don't know if she got offered a contract yet. Well, they better. I they honestly can't recall eight, the like, spot. Eight, Not in right that now, good of a condition. Get this woman a contract because she's carrying the women's division with Britt and maybe one or two other people. Sort of. Like, oh shit! Pretty, pretty, she was under contract with AEW. It's gritty, everybody, with the Ocho Malibu Al. A was good, but I can't help but think that Christian promo was well thought out. I'm not here to take anyone's spot, but he wants the world title. I'm not a workhorse. He is the workhorse which I can name 10 wrestlers better than Christian. Seven tenths tonight. Yeah. Well, you th- Wait a minute. Malibu Al, so you think the promo was well thought out or it wasn't well thought out? I'm confused. Wait a minute. Because he's... Okay, let me read this again. Hold on. AW was good, but I can't help but think that Christian promo was well thought out. I'm not here to take anyone's spot, but he wants the world title. I'm not a workhorse. He is the workhorse, which I can name 10 wrestlers better than Christian. What? Okay, so I, all right, I get what he's saying. What he's saying is Christian said, um, I'm not here to take anybody's spot. But then he said he wants the AEW title. So really, he is taking a younger talent spot because that was one of the criticisms that was being addressed. And then, two, also back with that, he said, uh, what? Oh, that he's a workhorse. Well, You know, Malibu Al says, I can think of 10 of the wrestlers that are more, you know, of a workhorse than Christian is. Wow. And I can see what he's, I can see what they're saying. You know, there's probably some better wrestlers than Christian right now in AEW, no doubt about it. So he's really going to have to do a lot of work to prove himself. And I think he's ready for it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think that's what it comes down to. So. Let's let's let him get some matches in and see what happens. I really think we're going to get that six man tag with Kenny and the Good Brothers against John, Eddie, and Christian. So let's see what happens. Um, I think the other thing about it is with as you know, like 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 dude, it's funny you brought up Miro because I don't I, I again this show was so. There were so many things that I thought could have been somewhat better, but then so many things were so good tonight on AEW Dynamite that the Miro stuff is so terrible that I didn't even remember what happened with that. I remembered the things that weren't that good or that I had a problem with, and I remembered the things that I loved, but his thing was so just dead that I didn't even... Oh, shit. Playing the spot all day. I want you to jam it in. Oh my god! Oh, it's in your bunghole. Oh, oh, it's in your bunghole. Holy shit! I want it jammed in my bunghole. Oh my god, Ryan! Ryan with $200! Ryan Nick. Look at you, you crazy son of a- Ryan! With the $200 bomb of Kenny Omega! (laughs) I really made you nervous there. (laughs) I can't believe Kenny Omega is here. Holy shit, everybody. Ryan, your girlfriend. Ryan. 
I feel the dread of dreams. Holy shit! Ryan, I can't believe that, man. That was nuts, bro. Holy shit, what's going on tonight? Holy Let crap. Back on. Do you want back on? Unbelievable stuff. Hey, listen. Ryan, I, I, oh, holy shit, bro. <laughs> Unbelievable. Everyone in the chat loves that version, so it's just it's I love so it catchy. Too. I, I, I mean, it, it's Stimulus Day. That's what this is. It Jake, is. Everyone's happy Stimulus St. Patrick's Day. Happy Stimulus St. Patrick's Day. And don't forget, hey, you know what's funny is me and you haven't got our stimuluses. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I'm not going to get one, but I, you better get one soon. But here's the deal. Tomorrow night is out of nowhere, but but Friday night is monetize this, and I mean monetize this is going to be huge this week. I think uh, you know some some. I've heard some news that it's it's going to be an explosive episode. I've heard some news that I might, I could put my belt on the line unexpectedly, randomly monetize this Friday night. To be honest, Ooh. so I mean, not saying I'm gonna. I could do the heel thing and say screw you all. I'm not doing a damn thing. I don't have to do a damn thing. I don't want to do. But hey. It's up to you, but I mean, to be a fighting, defending champion, that just brings up your honor. People wanted you to be the champ to begin with. I think that, uh... I don't know. I might prolong it a, a little bit. bad idea. Someone's going to go up against Jesse and his king, his crown. That's true, too. Someone's got to take that title potty from Jesse. mouth. Hey, Ryan, thank you so much, man. Um, that's crazy. We, we got another one coming in here. Ryan, $200 bomb from Ryan, man. Funding this show... <laughs> Here comes Shell. Oh, Shell with a punch to the cock. Oh, 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 oh. That's all I got. Man, he's getting. Oh, he's Stop getting told. Good God, he's dead. Oh. Oh my God, stop it. Shell tipped $21. Happy St. Patty's Day. I missed the whole show until the ladies' match. Hell yeah, ladies' match of the year for sure. Thunder Rosa. Yeah, Thunder Rosa. Shell, what's going on? Happy St. Patty's Day. I just played with the... I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yo, <laughs> Shell, th Shell, thank you for the $21 drop. Shell, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. And I hope your Jets do well uh, this year. LeBron James owns a part seems of the like Red Sox. Everybody's getting some decent picks from what I've seen all around. No one seems that discouraged. By what? A lot of trades, good picks. People oh, are yeah. seeing a lot of promise with the NFL this season. With so. the NFL. But, dude, LeBron James owns a part of the Red Sox, and I want to stab my soul out. <laughs> I thought that was a joke when that was. Yeah, me too. I said D, D Moon was hitting me up over and over again. I'm like, what's this D Moon don't talk to me? So it must be some kind of bad news. And he goes, oh, LeBron James owns some of the Red Sox. I'm like, yeah, I own some of your mother's hole. Like, get the fuck out of here. And then I, I find out it's real. <laughs> and I, my, dude, my heart wants to blow up inside my body. And, like. That is disturbing. I feel like I've been, like, raped with, like, with, like, a Lakers stick or something. It's just disgusting. Like, I feel disgusting in my soul. A curse. Um, and that's got, it like, a s super long meter stick ruler with no lube right up there. Joey Janela still hasn't stick. come on the show. Joey Janela, the liar, unbelievable. He, he even replied to you the other day, yep. and he still didn't come on. He's still a liar. Thunder Rosa, maybe maybe Thunder Rosa only follows me because she's not technically in AEW. Maybe with NWA, that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. So I, I, mean, I, really I didn't sure. hear back from Tony Khan anyway, so you can't feel too bad. Well, I think if you start talking crap about him, then he'll respond. Like that seems to be like just if you talk shit, then he responds. Or if I use bad grammar, like Cody did. Yeah, use bad grammar, look like a mongoloid, and say the wrong thing. Did you just donate to Joe? Did you hey, just donate to bad Joe? Grammar. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Alabama grandma. And because you donated, I'm going to feast myself in the bunghole. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Hey I made a song tipped $3, if you're happy and you know it beat your meat. Mm. If you're happy mm. and you know it beat your meat. Yeah. If you're happy and you know it then your cock will surely show it if you're happy and you know it beat your meat. Second verse. If you're happy and you know it fuck Debe. <laughs> I like that part. There we go. Now we're talking. Hey I made a song tipped three dollars. Thank you, Hey I made a song. That's a sweet one. We got one more. Yeah. That was actually actually a, a guy who's uh, on the oh never mind. Did you just donate <laughs> to Joe? Did you just donate to Joe? Stoneheart. Thank you. Brett for Austin. Donation. And because you donated, what's up? I'm going to feast myself in the bunghole. <laughs> Stoneheart Brett Austin tipped three dollars. Can we all agree on this if we take off our partisan hats and look at it objectively? The one-day event of January 6, 2021 was much crazier and more impactful than any one-day event of protesters in summer 2020. Again, I'm only saying one-day events, not multi-day. What is... Is he talking about the Capitol thing? Yeah, he's saying that did more than any other protest did so far. Well, that's only because the media covered it. Well, eh. Maybe you're right. In a way, I guess I guess so. But, you know, the media, they could have done worse things other places. It, it the media certainly had the most it. specific coverage. So. Yeah, everybody was covering it. And, dude, for weeks we, were, we saw all the things on Facebook. And then the government and everybody pretended like they didn't know it was going to happen. I was like, what? But the other ones did build to create progress no, with the capital, in some regards. Yeah, what the Capitol one showed me is that everyone's a liar. Because they Unless acted like, you, oh, we're you went surprised. Ahead and stole money from BLM, you know. Yeah, that's okay, though. That's all right. But um, listen, it's very strange. I don't know, man. We'll talk about that. You got to donate that stuff on another show. I'm not going to go into that on a wrestling show. I don't even, I don't even know Shit what I, bomb. Feel, I, don't I think about that. This. Celebrating my 33rd birthday and my Woo! first anniversary off to watch the Leprechaun series with my wife. Oh. Hey, Ryan, have fun, man. That's sick. Dude, I haven't really done anything really today, but the one thing I enjoyed today, Ryan, with my wife was when her dad was here and the kids were fired up and we had corned beef and all the potatoes and... All the, um, God, what, cabbage. Corned beef and cabbage for me is like, dude, I was like, I got home and I was like, like, where is it? You know what I mean? I mean, the last time I did that, I was looking for Leah naked. It, I was like, where is it? And her dad was like, what do you, what's wrong with you? I ate a whole plate of shit. Like, it was crazy. I ate so much food, dude. Like, I'm going to, I'm probably going to throw up later. It was just so, oh, I love this time Don't of year. Mind if I do. I love St. Patty's what's Day. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate friends. Perfect sparrow donations aren't popping. Yes, they are, sir. They're popping, baby. I Ryan. think they were all just paused. For I had them paused. Time. Yeah, Ryan, I had them paused, man. But I appreciate you. So we did you. get your huge bomb, so thank you. Yeah, the bomb is up, and that's what matters. I can tell Leah. I said, Leah, I, oh, my God, someone just dropped $200. And Leah's like, must have gotten the stimulus or something. Like I was like, dang, we didn't get ours. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Hey, everybody works hard for their money. So no matter what, they earned it, stimulus yeah. or not. I think LeBron's money. an incel, bro. He's trying to buy the Red Sox to Don't ruin us because he's a New York Don't Yankees fan. Like, What's my name? This can't be right. Team going this war from Tony. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate, chocolate blend. MJFS promo line should have been Jericho won't be the goat when my career's over hell be dead. It's true so would have been epic. Yeah. I, I want to get into the Miro thing, but what MJF said was so top notch. It, it really is one of my favorite promos from this year so far. He belittled Chris Jericho. I've got 25 years left in the tank. You're almost done. You know, you wouldn't be the GOAT. I'm going to, you know, I, yours truly will be the GOAT. And we're the backbone of AEW for years to come. And we're going to capture everything. Don't you worry. The pinnacle, you know, we're going to do what we want, when we want it. And we want right now is Chris Jericho's locker room, which they then took. I wish he said, he, you went from being the GOAT to the geezer, like, or something well, like that. Well, yeah, you know, like somebody else donated in chat and said as well, you know, GOAT to dead. But the fact that he said, I've got 25 years left and you're aging. I'm 24. I'm unstoppable on the mic, in ring, in anything. I'm the most talked about wrestler, and I've been held back. You know, same thing with Sean Spears. He's been held back, and if you got a problem with him, he'll hit you with the, you know with a chair shot. 
FTR is the greatest tag team and they look great doing it. Tully is, you know, the, the pinnacle and everybody asked, you know, it worked well with them all being together. And he said, you know, we, I had to stand back as far as Jericho's headline, that our hairline, excuse me, that was a good one. Right. Um, made fun of the fans too. Typical heat there, but I, there's so much more than I'm missing here. He, he just tore down everybody. And the beatdown being shown as well from last week was a nice touch on top. It just really worked very well. Yeah, beautiful stuff. I thought it was great. Um, and, uh, and also, Jade attacked uh, Red Velvet, you know, in the sense of not attacked her, but got her face really close, and they're kind of like jawing at each other and, and mean mugging. So that's good that, that we might get a singles match out of them two soon, too, because the interaction they did have for her debut match was not bad. Yeah, you know what? I agree. And speaking of agreeing... I'm gonna agree on uh, something else. I didn't even realize I, I had the. Uh, I didn't know I even had the phone open, but apparently I did have the Skype open, so I, I didn't even realize. Oh, that. there you go. Let me take a Skype call because someone called and I didn't even know the phone was up, and they must know the number because they called. So let's put them on the air. Um, six oh six. What's up? Of course, I know the number. It's Joe Cronin's number. What's up, baby? Man, I just gotta say, I just gotta say that was the best women's wrestling match I've probably seen. You know, ever I, I in a long ass time, yeah. I yeah. mean, it was straight up. It was straight up ECW 1999 shit. Um, I mean, that was off the chain. Like I had to bring my wife. I hollered at my wife. I'm like, you got to come in here and watch this shit. Wow. Um, I didn't see her blade though. I, I did not see if she bladed or not. Um, they were saying on Facebook that she bladed. Britt Baker um, bladed on her hairline, but I, yeah, I she, yeah. she they yeah. both bladed for sure, Joe. Yeah, they, they look like they. I I didn't catch. Britt both did of them, it in the but... corner when she first did it, right across her her top right hairline. But on and the then show Rosa did the same w, thing man, after the, the like latter show. Every week they were getting better and better and better, and you know, I, I don't I, I don't know where it ends. I don't. I mean, I certainly don't think that they're going to take over WWE and, and this and that WWE is a billion dollar company and they're like, they're a small company, but it's good. It's, it's wrestling. It's wrestling. It's just fun. It feels like anything can happen. And that's what I always go back to. Anything can happen. It doesn't f WWE used to say that, by the way, thanks for the call, man. I appreciate that. Great call. Um, I used to say that with WWE, you know, anything can happen in the WWE it doesn't really feel like that anymore. It feels like anything can happen in AEW. And that's the difference. Even if it's bad, it might be not very good, but it's still more exciting feeling. It's exciting or different or new or, or I don't want to always say unprecedented, but that's kind of what it comes down to at this point. For another or company or a new company. New things or things we haven't seen in a long time. Or I, I can't recall the women in WWE doing anything near this violent. Yeah, Can I you? mean, uh, I know, I know the women have had some Hell in a Cell matches and moments. Sasha and Charlotte. No, the main Sasha roster. The main roster hasn't. I don't think there's been a women's match that has looked anything like this on the main roster. I, I can't recall one either. Yeah. I'm trying to, but I just I can't. And it wasn't so. CZW type of trash. Not that they're trash. I like CZW in many ways, but but, but yeah, it wasn't. But there's a. It, a specific style that people are looking for that fits. Oh, and Don Callis giving the young bucks the shirt for Papa Buck that said, you know, it was the thigh slap shirt. That was hilarious. <laughs> no Don, leg slapping. I've always loved Don Callis and um you know, since I, I mean I guess he's, he's a so awesome. shit bag with some of the stuff that happened with impact with the sexual allegation things and I don't know enough Wait, of the what? details to say one way or other. I don't but know what you're they talking did about. that they did that full investigation with him and Impact. And I believe he was cleared with everything, but people are saying the investigation wasn't handled well. And hmm. But his name was, was searched quite a bit uh, not that long ago with sexual misconduct allegations with him Impact. So. Oh, no. It just seems like every time you turn around, there's something different with somebody. Well, tonight was a crimson bloodbath and women's wrestling shined tonight on AEW. And if AEW, I mean, take that and put that in a tweet. You know, Joe Gronin says, women's wrestling tonight on AEW shined over anything else that I've seen in a long time. This was a phenomenal night for women's wrestling and a phenomenal main event for the show and really felt like a, like a, 
let's give you a show now that the death match kind of didn't do so well. And this was delivery, man. This match delivered tonight as a main event on Wednesday nights. This is what you're looking for in a main event. It, not, not that it has to be a hardcore fight every time, but this was just beautiful. It had all the right things. It kept building. This was more hardcore than WWE Extreme Rules will ever be, which is ridiculous. And this was just... Uh, you know, you know. I would say the death match at Revolution was more hardcore than a WWE Extreme Rules pay per view, but this was even more hardcore. And we were still in the in the realm of actual wrestling hardcore, and not in the realm of just gross. You know, it was a real fight, ECW type feels, hardcore match feels, and and Jim Cornette will probably say something about. That time of the month or something, or whatever. but it was <laughs> a great. If he doesn't put this match over, I mean, I don't know what to say. Mike M in the chat is great. That's you know the sexual allegations with Don. That's why he's the invisible hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I see, four and one mania posted one of the articles that said Anthem confirms that allegations of inappropriate behavior by a member of the Impact Wrestling executive team was made by a former talent but not until many months after the talent had been released. These allegations played no part in the decision by Impact Wrestling to release the talent. Once it was made aware, we engaged an external human resource consultation to conduct an investigation. They re uh, retained independent counsel for advice on the matter. An inquiry was held in consultation with the complaint, complainant, and the allegations are proven to be completely without merit. The matter is closed. So that was oh. that. They're saying he's cleared. Okay. So there you go. That's good news, I guess, right? So believe all believe some women. Don't don't believe all women. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't believe you, you all can't. women. I mean, look at what happened with, with Enzo Amore and yep. so many others. That's just one that always comes to mind because of flip, rip, stick, and boom. Flip, rip, stick, and boom. Like who will ever forget flip, rip, stick, and boom? That was shit bomb. Fiery. Catch Mission Whoa. Pro Wrestling Empty Promises this Saturday night live on Title Match Network. Yes. Thunder Rosa will be on commentary and be in tag team action. Yes. Keelan King and Nyla Rose are wrestling. Guys, La Rosa Negra defends her title. Guys, La, La Rosa uh, Negra defends her title. That's going to be a big one. Wait, Ryan, what'd you say? Ryan Romano gives $20 in a super chat. Catch Mission Pro Wrestling Empty Promises. Guys, this Saturday Night Live on Title Match Network. Don't watch Saturday Night Live. Oh, watch Rosa this. Negra, gotcha. Watch yeah, she's this. defending her title. I'm telling you guys, use coupon code CRONIN. Shit, Bob. And you're going to get half off. Thunder Rosa is the best. Oh, Red Raven Rucker, thank you for the $1.99. I, we love Thunder Rosa, man. She's been great to us. She's been great everywhere, man. We just love her to death, and she, I'm and telling she's you, she's gonna be on commentary. She'll be she'll, she's usually pretty fiery there. She'll so. be she'll be fun on commentary, man. So check check it out um, this Saturday night, title match wrestling. Use Cronin the coupon code Cronin. You're gonna get half off four ninety nine. You can watch that, and then thousands of other things, man. Check it out. I'm telling you, title match network is wonderful, and they love us, and they're great sponsors of the show. Please go listen to them and give it a try thousands and thousands of live eye pay-per-views from the last 20 years behind the scenes stuff and live ones every week damn straight and there's so much content and i mean so much content it's unreal i i gotta backtrack really quick because this this whole interview bothered me so much miro said he's done with chuck and orange cassidy why would he not still be pissed at them? It, that was odd. And then Kip's like, I can't let it go. What, look what they did to my, or my wedding. They ruined it. And he's like, you know, are you blaming me, Miro says? And Kip's like, no, but you did shove my wife and she's hurt. And, you know, so then Miro snaps on Kip and he's like, oh, I'm, I, you know, you're the worst thing for my career is having your wife at ringside. And, and if the bell rings, you're, there's no one that's going to stop me and I'm going to become world champion, which is a far cry of a possibility. And he's like, we could still be friends outside of the ring. And then Kip accepts the match. So if he just said, basically, I'm going to destroy you to get through you to get to my goal. Why would you agree to a match, a tag with him? And why would Miro not want the match in the first place after they embarrassed him last time? 
Yeah, I don't know. And, and, and it, none of it makes sense. The Miro stuff is is just objectively piss poor. There is nothing of merit. There's nothing good. It's it's a, a laughing stock of wrestling at this point. You know, their stuff with Cornette is more interesting, and I kept thinking the yeah, whole time, and like, only because of what Cornette's saying. Nothing to do with them. Yes, they don't, he doesn't even know what a mark is, Miro, and all the things he said there. He's a fucking made idiot. Absolutely no sense to attack Cornette. There's enough to attack him for, especially with that almost hour long rant that he replied with, which was excellent. Holy hell, he tore them apart. Yeah, li- and even Brian Last got me. At first, I thought he was doing like an SJW thing, and then I loved how much of an educated retort it was. If you really care about women and, and women's suffrage and all these things, then you will call out your boss and everybody else around you, and then I will stand with you side by side to, to support women, or else you're just telling me you did this for attention and you're a piece of shit. Listen, so powerful, so great. Miro's an idiot. I just tweeted out Miro has the IQ of Ryback, okay? This guy's a fucking nincompoop. Miro, if you're listening, you're a fucking nincompoop, okay? And uh, Kip Sabian or Sabin or whatever his name is, listen, I'm sorry. They they portray Penelope Ford that way. She's hot as hell and she's cool. I like her. Oh, yeah, she's beautiful and she's not bad in the ring at all, but... but- she has always been portrayed in that like kind of slutty way. That's how she she's look at her wedding dress. It has to be super low cut and barely any material there. That that's what it was. Sex sells. You're offering your body. She's always been. And then uh, he must not think that much of her either, especially of his wife, because he went ahead and when she left Joey Janela not all that long ago, because they were in AEW initially together, if you recall, she was with Joey Janela then. Uh, Kip was posting on Twitter about how she's so busy blowing me at this point and saying all this stuff about, you know, oh, your your, your ex is, is busy, you know, taking care of my manhood. So that's a good way to talk about your now wife as well. It's like and Cardi you're B. About other people objectifying her, but you're doing it even worse. It's like Cardi B getting upset that somebody called her a whore. It's like, well, um, is that not what we're going for here? I mean, like, what is are we that doing? Not what you openly said you had done. You had hoard yourself and then robbed men illegally. Like, yeah, I mean, listen, these people are you dumb openly as fuck. admitted this. I, I, Cornette's a dickhead, but like Miro's a fucking idiot. He is an idiot, uh, you know, and he is a, a total douche at this point. And he's point. fucking Miro just horrible on this show. What he's what he's saying. Oh my god, dude! I mean, he. I mean, we're like, I love it because all those stupid fucking people who thought Rusev was so Rusev Day. Are you like, yeah, he's fucking a mongoloid. This is probably like I said, like, I was never crazy about Aiden English or the Rusev Day stuff. It wasn't bad, but it was never anything that I was like, oh, this is great. And Lana was weird with it. She just kind of latched on. She had, oh, Lana number one because my husband's getting attention. And you can tell WWE would never wanted to push it, so it fell to the wayside. Rusev was better as a heel, and they shit-canned him because he had to lose to Cena, and then he lost every pivotal, important match going forward from WrestleMania 31 onwards. The weird thing is he was pretty good as Rusev, and uh, it was doing fairly well. I still think WWE And then they should- had to do the cuck angle to finish it out. Well, that was—that's what he was trying to make light yeah. of, you know. Don't have your wife at ringside. Yeah, bring up more WWE fucking. Yeah, he should know, have stayed hits. as far away from that as possible. He exactly. should have been like, that's okay. what he should be avoiding. He should be, you know, trying to reinvent himself. But instead, he's focused on Twitch and YouTube. It, he should and not what, wrestling. What, what he he wants to dress like Mickey Mouse and and. Well, what he should have done Gucci was. Clothes. What he should have done was thought, okay, what got me, what was, what I was over in WWE with was when I was a badass, crazy brute. So I should be like Miro the Warrior or, or Miro the, it should be Miro Party or something like that or Miro something. And he should come out, be a wrestling war machine, almost like Taz and ECW meets something else. And he should have cut crazy promos on people and cut crazy rants like he's capable of. But instead, he comes in and he just yells about video games and his clothing, and then he makes fun of his promos in WWE that weren't good. And it was like, what? Like, this is a step back. You're mock. Like, it's not working. It's like everybody came in, right? Like, when, um, when, uh, John, uh, when, uh, what's his name? I, I still can't believe he's dead. Um, I can't believe he died. It's it just hit me again that he's that he's gone. Jesus, um, John Huber when he came in the WWE, oh, Brody Lee, yeah, AEW, yeah. Brody Lee, he was doing the Vince mocking thing, and that like we were like mixed reactions on that. But Miro was doing the same thing, and it was like so everybody's gonna come in and then do their weird jab on Vince, and it was like no, just come in as this badass. Like why would you? 
It's like, remember when Jericho debuted in WWE? There's Jericho showing up. It's awesome. And he's facing off against The Rock for the first time on the show. Yeah. Here's Miro with Kip Sabian talking about a wedding. Exactly. And and, and he was the best man. It, it was very bizarre. And, and as you said, it, uh, Brody Lee, he came out, he had a great introduction, tearing people's heads off with clotheslines and this really cool promo beforehand. Then next week, he's got the suit on. Suit's fine. Everything they started to do afterwards, but the initial comparisons to VKM was just not working. That, it, that was not good. If anybody, I get what they were trying to go for at first, but but they killed it. So If anybody's coming in here, I mean, we've loved the show tonight. We've we've put the women over for like 30 minutes. It's been amazing. We didn't need to. They put themselves over like crazy tonight. We didn't do anything. I, no, I, but, I think about how many times with Rusev and Lana and all that, you know, the, the cold dead fish. And, you know, we're laughing not because they're doing good. We're laughing at them. Like, it's funny to think back and think how horrible the stuff with Dolph Ziggler and uh, Summer Rae was and those cheating angles and um, then everything with Bobby Lashley and the League of Nations when they got destroyed at WrestleMania by Mick Foley and, and Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold. That was embarrassing for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, he t- he teamed with Nakamura briefly for to do nothing. They challenge for the SmackDown tag titles at WrestleMania 35, lose, and then do nothing. He starts the Rusev Day stuff that fails, and that's it. The only shot he ever really had was when he was like the anti-American, pro-Putin, you know, brute from Russia, the Bulgarian. That was the only thing that started to work. And then they had Cena beat him, and he lost his momentum, and no one cared. Yeah. Um. And he came in like a you know a fart in church. No one gives a shit, and and it's embarrassing. And <laughs> people hope that you just leave. Man, I just can't get over how those women tore it up tonight. That was such. I a know that's event. so excellent. I, I was watching the, the replay here and and going through little spots of the match. Like I said, besides you know Marvez having to stand there and look like an idiot with the Miro interview, everything else was was pretty good overall, if not really good. Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker. The thumbtacks, usually I'm not a crazy fan of, but they sold those so well, and they built to a, a lot of tension around that. You know, who's going to end up being the one to, to get them? Because you got Rebel grabbing the bag, Baker's pouring them out, and she's going for the, this quick get neck breaker, and then Rosa gets the reversal, and you're trying to go through the table, and then all of a sudden you get power bombed right on the tacks, and that's great, great near fall of a two count, like just, just spot after spot. But it made sense and it flowed so well that it didn't feel like it was a, a rehearsed montage. Yeah, it felt it felt pretty authentic and pretty good in that way. Very violent, worthy of the unsanctioned stipulation that they have. The lights out. Um, really, really cool that they they you know use the story to pay this off with this you know with the women's rivalry. Now I want to see Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa move on. Have Rosa go for the women's title, and you can continue their feud again down the line when they got the belt. And um, Kylie Ray's coming back to wrestling, but who cares? Yeah, Kylie Ray. Uh, we'll see what I happens. Hate, I can't long stand her. I don't know. She disappears. She, she makes me insane. By the way, they put the match up already uh, of Thunder Rosa, and they called it on All Elite. They said graphic slash violent. Yes. Unsanctioned lights out match. Anything goes. You got to love it. I guess they because they're not censoring and, and discoloring the blood, it looks like. so. Right. Uh, next week, we have a TNT title match. Darby Allen taking on John Silver. I still like the Dark Order. I'm looking forward to that. Maki Ito went back home. She's no more, so that's a positive for me at this point in time. It wasn't even the character nor any of the BS. It was, it was her in-ring ability. Apparently, she's been working for four years, and if that's the skill she has, that's not saying much. So she, she needs some work. She was exceptionally green. We also have Nyla Rose versus Tay Conti, so that'll be a good match. I've been impressed with Tay and what she's done. Uh, the Pinnacle, so FTR, Sean Spears are teaming up to take on Varsity Blondes and Dante Martin, so that'll be interesting. And then we have Kenny Omega taking on Matt Seidel, and if Matt wins, he gets an AEW championship title match. So a lot, lot to you know look forward to next week, and that, that show will be live. That's um well maybe I'll see what day is that? That's next Wednesday. So oh I thought it was like a different no that's show. that's next week's dynamite. Oh dynamite will be live yeah for the people that I saw people in the chat or something earlier that didn't know I didn't know either until you told me I had no idea this was taped tonight. It actually felt live again. I even forgot you told me it was taped earlier. Yeah, thankfully it didn't come across that way. You know the the live fans yeah. the reaction. So. 
Um, yeah, Kylie you know, Ray is we'll, about we'll as see what's going on going forward, but she's about as dependable as Lars Sullivan at this point. You know, I won't be there because people found out on my my racist blog. By the way, I can do a hell of a Jesse Ventura. It's like, yeah, you sound like him. What do you mean you do a hell of a Jesse Ventura on his cameo? I'm like, dude, you sound exactly like him. That's what, <laughs> unbelievable stuff. Um, listen, anything as else? As well as NXT goes, Joe, uh, they announced that Escobar and uh, the Irish Ace, they're actually going to go ahead and face off finally. So that'll be good. So Devlin and Escobar will finally face off to see who is the true NXT Cruiserweight champion. He was the cruiserweight champion. Devlin was before the pandemic, and then he was stuck in the UK for so long that Santos Escobar became the interim champion. Finally, a year Whoa. since the pandemic began, they're going to settle it at the takeover before WrestleMania. Let's go, man. Let's go. So I'm really excited for that. Then we have TikTok, Finn Balor, Karrion Cross. So we have both of these matches for takeover, stand and deliver. It's going to be a two night event the week, uh, the Wednesday and Thursday before WrestleMania. So, sounds super exciting. Uh, the first night will be live on the USA Network. The second night will be live on Peacock oh, only. I can't. Oh, Peacock only, baby. Hey, uh, 203, That's hang on one second. That's kind of their big test before WrestleMania. Oh, I can't wait. I'm ready to go for WrestleMania, baby. I'm ready to see that many people in a crowd. That's firing me up. 203's on the phone with us. What's up, 203? What up, Joe? Chilling, man. Long time no speak, ho-ho. What's up, baby? That's my wife, Ho Ho. No, I'm just kidding. No, what's going on with you, man? 203, Connecticut. Yep, right yep, moment. man. Just repping hard, man. That show went off, dude. Everyone, whoever thought, like, I don't know, Britt Baker was some dainty bitch, she proved herself, yo. Yeah, man, she really did. I think she's been up and down, in my opinion, but I've liked her overall. And uh, tonight, man, that was some of the best shit. Uh, we've seen the only thing I didn't like of her so far was the tooth and nail match. That that dentist yeah. thing was bullshit. Tooth and, and nail match. Those things are hard to do, anyways. Everything I give her the props. Yeah, man, I definitely do. I think Britt Baker nailed it tonight. Um, this was the opposite of the tooth and nail match, and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it, bro. What else is up? Oh no, nah, yo, just joined the St. Patty's high as fuck. Let's go. The granddaddy purple. Oh shit, that's sick, bro. I haven't done shit. Dude, I like worked more today. I worked I did so much stuff today that I didn't even remember. I kept forgetting it was St. Patrick's Day and I'm like, "What?" Like, I mean, like, dude, this is like I don't think I've missed a St. Patty's Day or a friggin' uh Cinco de Mayo in a long time and like I just kept forgetting until I got the food. So, man, hey, thanks for the call, man. We love you, brother. Yo, can I drop a promo? Drop a promo on Jake's mom. No, just kidding. Drop a promo. Go ahead. <laughs> the JCS universe talking right now, the voice of the JCS universe. And y'all motherfuckers better wake the fuck up, because what Bit Breaker did, that should have been Mick Foley's fucking daughter doing. So, yeah. Hulk Hogan's son, all you fucking bums need to wake the fuck up. Boom. All you stupid kids. All you other pussy kids. Wake the fuck up. H Hogan's kid will crash a goddamn jet ski is what he'll do. Let's take another call. Uh, yo, 307, what's up? Hey, Joe. Bro, what's going on? Who's this? My Joe. Yo, Mikel, what's up, brother? Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hey, man. I really like. The main event. Fuck yeah, man. He, it was good, and, and the main event was my favorite thing, man. What would you think about the blood? My mind. You were losing your mind, dude. I was losing my mind, dude. I almost called my. I almost called Lee into the room too. I was like, "You got to see this women's match. It's killing it." I loved it, man. I'm so fired up for the women tonight. That was the best one. I really liked that match. Yeah, that, I mean, it was a good match. It was good too. It was good, man. What would you give it out of ten? The whole night. Uh, 
10.5 out of 10. Yeah, that's what I gave it, 7.5. I got the NJ head truck for good. I like that. I got John Martin and King I like that. So the whole night was real good. Yeah, the whole night was real good, but who was your favorite promo of the night? Uh, NJ. I knew it! I knew it, Mikel! I fucking knew it! Now, M- Mikel, I want you to play this. Play the, Go to YouTube and play this in slow motion. Mikel, me and you are going down to the strip, and I'm getting the hall pass from the wife, and we're going up to every lady we see, and we're going, what's up, baby? And we're going, oh, baby, right inside of them, and, and they're going to say yes to it, okay? We're going to make sure that we get consent. We're not going to do anything okay. sick, okay? I love you, brother. I love you, Mikel. You sexy beast. Say Jay. fuck me. Yes. Jay, I Jake. Jake. Yeah. In your for the power no more tire the mall night, Jake. He said he kept your wife all up not all night, Jake. I don't doubt that. You know, I heard you're uh, quite the beast downstairs. So yes. I saw it do one night he was on stream, Mikel, and he was doing this sort of thrusting thing, and he had these gym shorts on, and I just couldn't help but think, wow. You saw it swaying like a helicopter. Uh, right. See, my problem is, Mikel, you got to help me out. You got to keep the busy while I'm, I'm on the shows. Joe's got me working hard. Yeah, bro. That means my dick's hardly working, so you got to keep it up for me. And he's like a human wingman, him, okay? He's getting laid yeah, because. Yeah, exactly. Who's going who's gonna to say no? You're going to say no to him? You're going to say no to this? And some girl's going to go, I wonder Courtney's gonna what say, he's like. No, I'm married. And you're going to say, I have a goldfish. And when she says what? And you're going to say, I thought we were talking about shit that doesn't matter. Now get over here and suck this. <laughs> oh, my God. Sold. Just sold. Sold. <laughs> what the fuck? That's awesome. Greetings, you beautiful earthlings. It oh. is I, Betsy Buns. Oh, hi, Betsy. Why does Becky Lynch call herself the man when she's not a man? It's a disgrace for real men like Finn Balor. I hate seeing women of cooties. I love my man Finn Balor. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Betsy Buns with that $3 donation. What a weird donation. Betsy Buns. Uh, Gorilla Strong let us know that they already made a pro wrestling t shirt for a bloodied <laughs> Britt Baker that says role model on Ooh. it. Pretty good shirt. So Thanks, Gorilla. That's good to know. I, I might, Pretty I'm, funny. Dude, you know what? This is one of those moments where I think I, I only own a couple of women's t-shirts ever. Actually, I only own one. It's Sasha Banks from back when she was fire. Did you fire. just donate to Joe? I buy this. Did and you Thunder just Rosa donate too. to Joe? Thunder Rosa, go check out her stuff. Thank you for the donation. She has a website. And because you donated, I'm going to feast myself. Yes. In the bunghole. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Off topic, but first day was a six. Five tenths and then next tea was a seven tenths. Anyway, today I saw a dark on a date kissing a drag queen talking the most confusing shit. Jesus Christ, what's the matter with this country? Take me back to Jerusalem fucking hell. <laughs> oh, my oh my God. Nebit the Jew. Nebit, thank you so much. It is great to hear from you, Nebit. Um, and what I will say is... Oh, man, we have so many calls coming through. Let me just hop over to Discord and see if anybody's over there. Oh, my God, dude. We got Bullfrog calling. We got Rastafas calling. I got 50 other... Dude, there's like 50... We've missed 50 calls in the last five minutes. Like, people are... people <laughs> are. hop over on Skype? Let's hop over on Discord real quick to uh, okay. the Bullfat. What does what the Bullfat got to say? Senor Frog. And uh, Joe, uh, I know he watched again. AEW allegedly. I mean, he said he did, but and again, uh, hey, Bullfrog, what'd you think of AEW, Frog? Well, he's dead. He's drinking a cherry coke. Currently. He is unmuted, though. That's the funny thing is, I see that his his mute button came off. Maybe he's trying to he probably put his sw- pants back on. His mic is probably active on his Skype now, and he doesn't know how to make it work on Discord again. <laughs> oh, there he is. Hey there, Bullfrog. There What's up, Bullfrog? 
Bullfrog? Yeah, I'll get What? Solid. Your mic is really low. Or you're really far away. Yes, one of those two. I thought I just had him turned way down. So, yeah, a lot of people, oh, you know, him. giving this a huge, huge uh, outpouring of support, justifiably so. They say the T-shirt reminds them of the image from WrestleMania 13, the Stone Cold shirt where he passed out with the blood down his face. Kind of does have that look to it. It's a really great shot. So, how sad is it when the women in a different company, like, are just more ferocious, fun, and fiery than your entire show? Yeah. Hey, Bullfrog, what's up? We heard you. Oh. Yeah, um, I'll get what? Your shit's all fucked up, bro. Imagine if he chokes on a pizza live. <laughs> well, so, well, so, well, I wonder for Domino's. I, I think I can I'm gonna ask. One. You know, if he starts choking on a pizza live, I'm gonna ask D. Welsh for his address so I can call the police for him. So at least you can get some help. D. Welsh, yeah. do something useful quick. Yeah, he could actually oh, help. one one You could save him. That'll be the you ultimate could, payback. That's the payback is he saves him, yeah. Well, you know what you happened? Know, you just said swallow pizza and choke, and I, I, I'll i omit names. I don't even know. They, they might even watch this at this point. But I had a, a really good friend growing up, and nicest kid. Very, very nerdy, though. Just obscenely nerdy. Like It was like embarrassing in front of other friends. But I, I went to kindergarten with him. We always stayed close friends. So I was just I was good with him. And I felt bad, you know, I never wanted to be mean to him, but I remember me and a couple other friends went out for pizza at one point in time and he goes ahead and he would, he just had the worst eating habits. He would get a small pizza and I, I wish I was exaggerating, but he would take it and he would roll it up almost like a taco and then roll it into a ball and put the entire small pizza into his mouth and just kind of chew as the, the grease would run down his face. And it was like horrifying. <laughs> Oh and one of these pizza incidents, uh, there was only two, but at the second time, he, he almost damn near died choking on cheese. So, Oh, my God, dude. That, it's so... that, was, that was the last time we ever uh, invited anybody in that sense out to eat. But... Life is scary, fragile. Like you, <laughs> it, it is unbelievable. Indeed. A slice of cheese pizza is going to be your demise. But Yeah, it's so scary. I mean, like seeing the kids in my house and me, like I've almost choked before. I've saved my kids three times. Like It's crazy. Shell, what's up? Shell's here. Happy St. Patrick's Day. What's going on? At least her mic works. Bullfrog yeah, can't figure it out. Excellent with that new mic. Yes, I got the new mic. Does it sound better? Oh, yeah. You sound yeah. really good. Right away, I noticed it. Different. I didn't know you got a new mic. I was just like, why did you sound good? Yeah, I got the Audio Technica 2100. Oh, there you go. Yep. Yep. Jake's mic. Oh. Yep, the JCS that, starter pack. But, but actually, mine's black. Where yours is a silver, mine's black. Oh, of course, so. you had to get a black one. Oh, they make a well, black one now? Is it bigger? Yeah. <laughs> Cracker's got a black mic. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's a show only gets the biggest of black mics. Yeah, hey. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So that match was fantastic. I missed the whole show, but I caught the women's match. And, and then you watched oh. everything important. No. Oh. I tell you, that was, that was amazing. Thunder Rosa, I love Everything her. else you can catch on YouTube and you don't have to watch yeah, it entirely. Watch the MJF it. promo, um, yeah. the highlights from the opening match, things like that. But you caught the women's match in full. That was fantastic. The only thing you could really like fully skip, I think, would be the Bear Country Jurassic Express taking on Matt Hardy match. The heels yeah. win, so they're doing more with Matt Hardy. That's going to lead to them facing the Inner Circle. So, Or not the Inner Circle, uh, excuse me, Dark Order. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the women, there were so many great moments in this main event lights out match. I mean, the, the crazy superplex, that was a hell of a near fall. All the stuff they did with the ladder and slamming down to that, you know, kicking her face into her ladder repeatedly and, mm -hmm. and going to the tables at ringside. I, I, I mean, the, the huge Death Valley driver on the ladder, the lock jaw onto all of the... Uh, thumbtacks as well that were in the center of the ring and, and the neck breaker and the power bomb onto the thumbtacks. I mean, there's so many things and it was only a 15 minute match. So yep. I, it, it was the perfect length of time. I thought that they were going to go and actually go long for a bit, but mm -hmm. what was your favorite moment of this match? I like the blood <laughs> and I'm waiting for all the period jokes, you know, Oh, the period blood. I'm waiting for that, but I don't care. I thought it was, I just thought it was awesome. I was just, my mouth was hanging open. You know, it's just like, finally, it's like, yeah, 
you know, it's like, oh, we've been waiting for this for how long, you know, and it's just, they, they need to have, I don't care. I mean, everybody thinks that Britt Baker should, you know, have the belt first, but I don't know. I think I, I would put it on Thunder Rosa. I mean, I see more money on Thunder Rosa at this exactly. time with it. I mean, I, think I love she can Britt work Baker with a few others too. Wrong. You know, I love Britt, Britt, Britt Baker. Britt's a, a great but... person to work with and she can certainly manage uh, to elevate a few other people as well. She's very interchangeable and she delivers a great match with everybody. And it always seems like mm -hmm. AEW wants to kill her, but I've not seen any period jokes on Twitter thus far. I'm sure they're out there, but what yeah. I see trending right now is hashtag mm -hmm. match of the year yes, for that's these what women. I saw. Tony mm -hmm. Khan obviously sent out his boast and thank you. And then from there, so many people hashtag AEW Dynamite saying this is an instant classic match of the year candidate. And I really cannot argue with that. Women's match mm -hmm. of the year, absolutely. Hard for anything to top this as far as a hardcore style goes. They did it really well and they didn't just rely on the weapons. They made the weapons feel exactly. special. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. As far as NXT Great. goes, I guess... Um, yeah, what well, I don't even know what the card was for NXT actually. The main event was Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, so the tag team champions taking mm -hmm. on Finn Balor and Karrion Cross with Scarlet. So obviously Star Cross lovers can't work together, you know, right. the, the fabled opponents being forced to be partners. And then there was a bad botch, I guess Cross superplexed or oh, suplex Burch while uh, Oni Lorcan was trying to break it up and he ended mm -hmm. up suplexing both opponents. And the referee checked on Birch while the broadcast team said Balor didn't seem to be in any hurry to help anybody, it says here. And I guess Birch was then tended to a trainer by ringside. And um, hopefully Birch is okay. He and the trainer, you know, they headed to the back for quite a while during the match. I guess they came up with something because he was able to come out and do the finish. But hopefully he's not severely injured or anything that will keep him from wrestling. No kidding. Wow. Hmm. Scary it's how a uh, suplex you know, can I used such to a be, bad spot. I'll tell you something, Jake. I used to be a diehard NXT person. Okay, I mean when AEW was, you know, first just doing the pay per views and stuff before Dynamite came to fruition. Um, I was just very hesitant to watch AEW. I'd always watch, you know, NXT and just, you know, fuck AEW kind of thing. Now I'm total one eighty. I am so I, I'm right there with you, honestly, Show, and, and I was a huge proponent of NXT. I still do enjoy it, but not nearly as much as right. I once did, and I can't always put my finger on it because right. I, can, I, I see myself criticizing AEW more, but I feel like I do that out of the point that I, I feel like they could give us such a better either matches, storylines, moments. They really do have the talent and the necessary mm -hmm. ability to do such, so they should be giving us these type of 7.5, 8 shows week in, week out. It shouldn't be that difficult. And when they get a crowd back, it should be even better because people are going to be craving to see live wrestling, you know, in a full capacity that mm -hmm. it, it's going to make these moments next level stellar. So, yeah, I just like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, yeah, I, you know, and I, I sat some time and I'm just like, you know, like, what was it that turned me away from NXT? I don't know. It just, the only thing like I can that, think of is the counterbooking, is, is that they became so focused on what is AEW doing? Oh, they're having a theme show this week? Well, now yeah. we got to have Bash at the Beach, or we got to have like, Halloween Havoc. We got, And I know some of the things they were already doing, which is fine. They can both mm -hmm. have theme shows, but they were very reactionary to NXT. Very, uh, that's to that's AEW, exactly so. re reactionary. That's, that's exactly it. It's like, I mean, NXT's been around since, what, 2012? Has it been that long? Um, yeah, somewhere, somewhere near there because it started off as the reality. Yeah, because I mean, I remember I've been watching it for years and I'm just like, I loved yeah. it because they were so match. -oriented. It was what I wanted or, or, tough enough to be after yeah. the fact, but right. not initially. I mean, it, it, it started off like a good idea, then they turned it into that mm -hmm. stupid reality competition where they're carrying kegs. And oh, God, yes. Yeah, initially, when they bullshit. had everybody paired up with somebody as a trainer, and, and that was a cool idea, having matches, mm -hmm. and then it kind of devolved into a total mess. And then Triple H turned it into this live show with, you know, weekly programming and it was it really was a developmental brand and yep. gave people a chance to learn how to wrestle main roster style and work live TV, mm -hmm. which a lot of the indie talent doesn't know how to do because they're not being filmed regularly. And they get the little nuances they have to learn about how to work on a traveling show and they get that talent and expertise. They get to hone their craft and become familiar with the WWE audience. It, it's perfect. It's all a win. Yep. 
I don't know. It just it's lost its shine for me. I don't know what you know. Like like I think like what you said. I agree with everything you said. It's just weird. I am very critical, but of AEW, but because I I want it to succeed. I think that there's room for more companies. I mean, one person doesn't need to own everything. No, you know? and, and I'm also hearing that Vince McMahon is uh, got his fingers into NXT booking at this point in time as well. Oh, I that- know it. He's not fully involved, but he's he's still yep. pretty heavy-handed in the booking. And the more he surrounds himself with Yes Men, the more support he has to take over critical decisions in NXT. So Triple yeah, H's you, voice you is getting pushed out more with... and more. Look at what happened with the women's tag titles. That yeah. alone showed how much Vince. of a disaster that mm-hmm. uh, uh, that was a booking scenario from Vince out and out. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I then we know. hear that now they canceled the match at Fastlane between Braun and shane so they did yeah it's no longer on the ww website i guess they're trying to hold it to mania again so (laughs) i i don't know what they're doing but that shows what kind of mindset they have at least AEW did announce what excuse me what few matches Mm -hmm. they have announced for next week as we said we will get the pinnacle making their debut in ring as a stable so we'll get ftr and sean spears uh, being joined by MJF and Wardlow, taking on the Varsity Blondes and Dante Martin of Top Flight. Nyla Rose is going to take on Tay Conti. Kenny Omega is going to battle Matt Seidel. And if Matt wins, he'll get a future AEW world title shot. And it also is being built up of Rich Swan going ahead and defending his Impact title against Kenny Omega, who will have his AEW world championship on the line. As far as I know, it's title for title. I think Kenny will win, and then Kenny's going to go for the New Japan title not long after that. I'm still sticking to that. That's my thought with this. Hmm. I think that's what they're going for because they want him to be a title collector, and that matchup would be massive. So, Interesting. Speaking hmm. of massive, here comes the man with the gigantic dong, Rostafa. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but it's <laughs> – and he's muted. That's he doesn't even know it. He doesn't even know he's muted. He's just talking. Nobody can hear him. (laughs) Wait, wait, I'm here. There you go. There you go. Now he's here. Scared me, dude. That was funny. Mm -hmm. You were so muted. You were just like. By the way, happy Stimulus Patty's Day. It is Stimulus Patty's Day. Yes, indeed. All the the people got their stimuluses, I guess. Yeah. You know, in Canada, they informed us uh, uh, over the news today that, you know, how Trudeau gave us our. I guess equivalent to stimulus package that just remember people that the stimulus or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what they called it here. Serb or something like, yeah, it's just some type of support thing. It's a bunch of bullshit, but don't forget you have to claim that on your taxes. It's not. Oh yeah. Same here. I mean, that's why my wife ended up owing state taxes on top Mm -hmm. of taxes because even though she paid into everything, they charged her for the unemployment two weeks that she had. Of course. And the stimulus, so. Oh, Canada. Sucks ass. <laughs> well, uh, are they really I, making us pay it too, Jake? I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah Why do you think you they give you the money? Or uh, the new stimulus, if you get, that'll be taken out. And that could mm. be wage garnished as well. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. And the first two were protected, but this one's not with how oh. they had to sign it into law. They're trying to change it after the fact, but what good is that if people are getting their money taken away that they need? But the thing is, you know, they give you the stimulus and you're like, oh, wow, that's great. I got money. So you're going to have to pay tax on it. Why do you think they give you the fucking money? Because the the, the but, tax but they really, get back just pays for it. So exactly. It's like, it shouldn't be that way, though. It shouldn't be being bullshit. taxed because you're already getting taxed on everything you purchase. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're getting taxed when you make the money. You're getting, getting double taxed. Yeah, you're getting exactly. more than that. It's quadruple taxed by the time know, you're getting well, Plus all the money no that they... For you. Well, all the money they spend all this other stuff on, and it's like they could eliminate that easily. With Shit bomb! So Shit much bomb. waste. I it's don't disgusting. recall ever seeing a women's match with some tax in my years. It was spectacular even more so. It was Brit who took the bump. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. You know, she did the Jericho, so... Firebird I've seen uh, Johnny Gargano's wife. What's her name? Uh, Candice LeRae. Uh-huh. Christ, she was damn near dead from blood loss in a couple of the matches I've seen with her. So I, I've seen thumbtacks and crazy hardcore spots, but never on anything but an indie promotion. I have ne- I have personally only seen maybe two matches, maybe even two only two occasions where I've seen women bleed. I can remember like I mean again I've seen like you know Victoria taking on Trish and I think Victoria got a busted nose and I may have seen like, <laughs> shit you know, bomb. You know, 
Joe Rosa is a Mexican. She cuts grass or she is a white girl with a taco. Not oh, a my nigger. God. DJ Adams. <laughs> Jesus. Good God. I have to drop oh, somebody in the throat. Good Lord. Just like attacking Asians, our black donator, AJ Adams, is savage. Um, thank you so much, AJ Adams. <laughs> <laughs> tell your people it was actually proposed to start the night from tell your people Kaz. to leave the Asians alone all right what yeah you Kaz wanted us to start the night with a moment of silence for the Asian women that were killed today because there's that huge hashtag of yeah. stop I Asian hate going it. on yeah I, I guess they were being like systematically targeted and this is from the limited information I got well like, there was, was so many massage parlors the white people had to catch up to the they had What's to catch up name? horrible Gino. it's a whole new game you want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Chocolate blend. I'm calling in. I want to talk to Mikhail in his language of spit and stupidity. Oh. <laughs> oh my God! What did? Oh AJ Adams. God. He was talking better than you. So. AJ Adams, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I love you, but I'm gonna have to play something that uh, just got sent to me. Uh, this is quite interesting. Drum roll, Jake. Here we go. Let's uh, go ahead and play this here. My mouth was hanging open. <laughs> oh, man. My mouth was hanging open. How far? Fuck oh, you, wow. Drew. <laughs> Let's go ahead and... Uh, would have clipped that. Would you like to guess on who sent me that clip? Drew. That was my guess as well. Not to jump on the bandwagon. 100%. But... It was Drew, yep. Yeah. Of course, because he said it to me. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> of course. All right, well, there you go. And check. That's Winning. pretty funny. I'm searching for uh, thumbtacks, and I see Kaylee Ray putting Viper through a thumbtack chair. Uh, Women's Wrestling Network has thumbtack matches. <laughs> there's there there are out there. There's compilations. Barefoot thumbtack oh. match between uh, Cassie Summers and Timothy Thatcher. Oh my God! Did you what? Just donate to Joe? Barefoot thumbtack Did match. Did you just donate That's to Joe? That's crazy. Thank you for the donation, and because you donated, I'm going to feast myself. Oh God! In the bunghole. <laughs> oh my God! She is loaded with thumbtacks. Get that vaccine when you can. Tipped three dollars. What's I am throwing a celebration because I got my first Pfizer vaccine dose in my arm today. Ooh. The way it was organized it is so amazing to see what society can do. There were hundreds of nurses giving PPS shots in a big room. No side effects and I'm not dead. You just not yet. It. Give it time. Get vaccine <laughs> when you can. Thanks for the $3. Uh, uh, Joe, the Joe, last one I see Joe? is the Monsters Ball match with Jade Joe? and Rosemary and TNA. Apparently Thank they were the beating the hell out of each other with barbed wire and oh, yeah, really bloody. So. Ooh, I'll check that out. Yeah, I'll Myself. look at it. I'm trying to look at some others. but what's I don't know what Impact <laughs> Wrestling is, so... <laughs> <laughs> A jelly bum they got, thank you, three dollars big announcement in pop culture if you didn't know an alternate version of justice league is being released on hbo max at 3 s time tonight it yep. is Zack snyder's version of the movie and now the joker is in it joe if you want views make vids about it um i may i may uh you know i i it better be good, I'll tell you that. The hype I wanted it. to. I, I, Wandy said he wanted to talk to me about it, so that might be episode three of the podcast then. Cause it's coming up. I'm so excited for this. But oh, Wandy. I can't wait. Wandy's been talking about the Snyder Cut for longer than I have. So Yeah, he's probably psyched, man. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I can't wait for this to, to be oh, released. God, me too. I can't, wait, see, here's the thing, though. I didn't see the first one. The original. Well, you're better off that you didn't see it because now you'll Absolutely. have a fresh opinion on a right. probably logically seemingly better movie. There was actually critics that didn't like the original but and even said this was a far superior movie and still gave it a lesser score just because they're hypocrites. Like, it, it's so ridiculous. Mm. They didn't wow. get a rise out of any of them. That, that's what they're trying to do. But they literally, in their review, say, well, this, is, this movie is a far superior film, and then they give it less of a score. Speaking of score, um, <laughs> <laughs> I really I, I've looked back at some of the the old kind of women's matches, like Trish and Lita, and a few other ones from a while ago. Did you just and donate again, to like Joe? Said, Did you just donate Whoa. to Joe? I keep getting interrupted by these Justin Bailey donation. Oh my God! And because you donated, I'm going to feast myself 
in the bunghole. Bunghole. <laughs> I swear it wasn't me that killed those Asians. I know he looks just like me, but truth be told, I was fucking a deer last night. <laughs> oh, my God. Justin Bailey with a donation there. Oh my God. I can't believe uh, that he's actually got the guts to call to donate right now $7. Justin, what are you doing? Justin, you spelled your name wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you didn't. I mean, you you know, you also got caught too. So I mean, there's that as well, which is. I can't right now. <laughs> this is the third person that's done something <laughs> fucked up that looks like him. By the way, what the <laughs> fuck is so this? Is is anyone ever seen a picture of his brother? Because I mean, like. That's uh. Yeah, I have, but no, it doesn't look like that. Oh, okay, because <laughs> this is concerning a bit. Well, just the similarity. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's, that's I mean, crazy. It may be him. It could be. <laughs> Good God! Mm. I mean, I told you, man. All the all the black people have been assaulting Asians like crazy recently. Tons of black people assaulting Asians, and you knew at some point the white people were like, "We got to catch up to this. Like, we got to figure this out." So the FBI was like, they did the MK Ultra on this guy, so he would grab a gun and go crazy so that we could catch up. So now there's been like nine assaults by some black people on Asians and maybe a couple by white people, but they're way behind. So now this guy goes and takes out like six, seven or eight. And now we're caught right up. And it's like, oh yeah, I see your nine beatings of Asians and we'll raise you a slaughtering. Like I, it's just really <laughs> disgusting. What it, That was like, one of the things I loved about cyberpunk was the body count lottery. Every day you could buy into the lottery to guess how many people died for that day by murder or homicide. Yeah. Is that game still fucked up or what? It's, really? it's pretty broken. It's pretty abysmal. Yeah. Where are this guy's briefly, lips? But. This guy has the lips. I mean, if his lips look like this, what does this guy's dick look like? This is why he killed people. Or his people. asshole. It could be entire in those lips. I mean, what a gross. He could be in the witness protection program, <laughs> so he lost the skunk and the mustache and just got the mutton chop look going on. This you know? beard just, tells me all I need to know. The, the you know, long little... I got the pork chop going down. That's dude. This looks like gross. Pe like uh, this is like what it looks my like pubic hair. That's what my hair would look like if it grew all the way out. It, it can't even grow that long. But it's the face. This is. He's got a goat face. Yeah, he looks like a goat. I brought it back. There, <laughs> what a piece of shit idiot. He's like, I don't know why I did it. It's like, how about fucking we torture you? How about that? He's literally the goat. Oh of my god. people. Dude, please beat oh, yeah. the. Please beat this guy. What a piece of shit. Another fucking weird, you know, just... It actually looks better in this other photo they got of him. But, man, that hair ain't growing right, bro. Mm -mm. That's creeping me out. It's creepy. You know what else is creeping me out? What's that? Bullfrog's picture. You Bull see that? He's no. got his... Uh, looks like a fat leprechaun. In his yeah, it's, it's just... I told oh, him yeah, you can't yeah. do it from a low angle. It's the chin oh. thing, bud. You got to go from a high angle, Bullfrog. It really does look There's like him. Smoke. Bullfrog, you ever figure him out your mic, you fucking genetic defect fuck? There he goes. Uh, yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, we there you go. Him. Unfortunately, I'm just kidding. Look at that pic. Only a face of mother. Yeah. Love. Happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Thank That's you, Leprechaun, Leprechaun Bullfrog. Leprechaun. That's right, what up? How many green beers did you consume? Uh, How many I lost the gold did you cow. put in your children's pillows? Oh, Lord. Uh, no uh, comment. Ah, you just told him to follow the rainbow, huh? I got mm, it. Tasty rainbow, huh? Mm -hmm. Bullfrog, how was your St. Patrick's Day? Uh, it was okay. Okay. Well, listen, I'm fucking tired as fuck, and I'm probably going to get out of here in a minute. You got anything you want to bring that's, like, valuable uh, before we get out yeah, of here? Yeah, um, I, w I want to challenge you for your belt. Uh, I heard you're going to put it I heard you're going to put it on the line. Maybe. I don't know yet, but you're not even... You, dude, you fucking are so far behind right now. You're never going to be... You're not even going to be on the board Friday night. How? But you didn't beat me. You couldn't Other even beat Jake. Other people my yeah. out of nowhere title tomorrow night, apparently. So. You couldn't beat Jake Bullfrog last week. Like the fuego. I'm a defending, power. reigning defending out of nowhere champion, and I will put my belt on the line to whoever wants to challenge me tomorrow. Hmm. Well, I want to find some well, worthy competitors before the show for his uh, monetize his belt. But how could aren't you take the belt uh, when you couldn't beat me, Bullfrog? You couldn't even beat Joe. No, you couldn't beat him. Uh, Jeremiah, aren't you banned? Hmm? So, Joe, That's what, what makes how Bullfrog get on the number there? one contender? He's not. He's an idiot. He hasn't won anything. He can't even win Jake's out of nowhere title. That's because so you guys like, don't want me to get to win. 
He's also yeah. You, when guys, you, you he, guys fear me as the champion because you know fear. what I'll do with that belt. There's no fear. You just couldn't. It doesn't even matter get what you do with it. To, you'll never get a it. cardboard title. <laughs> you, you guys fear me as the champion. Okay. All right. Well, we're at the end of the night, Bullfrog. We're heading out of here. Uh, I think you suck. Um, but <laughs> yeah, you know, that's why I want to challenge you for your belt. You don't have the guts to face me. You can't even. No, I, uh, you're not even on the show. You're Bullfrog, not. Bullfrog, who just you. told you you couldn't even win a paper belt? You couldn't win a paper belt from Jake. I didn't want to win your your. But if you won the paper, paper belt, you said you, you would have gotten a shot at Joe's belt. How do you not get that? And then that you was your golden been a ticket. Champion, but now he's got no belts. You're a mess, you Bullfrog. Been Bullfrog that, that, belt. That show was rigged. I only had minus two points. That show was. was How was that rigged? There was nothing rigged about it. That was as straight up as it could be. Yeah, yeah right. the, the, you know what? But a big problem of yours is, dear, is is when you lose things or you don't accomplish what you set out to do. Everything's rigged against you. So what if I went up against you for some kind of belt or something, and it would show that you want to become an out of nowhere champion? Maybe it'll be a triple threat tomorrow. Show Bullfrog, and I'll try to retain they against just, the they two. Win. They, you, they, Jeremiah, they do you think you would beat me? Do you, you think, think you could beat, beat Show Bullfrog? Mm -hmm. No. No, <laughs> listen to that confidence. You were just oozing. I want, I want a piece of Joe. I want a cup of Joe. Everybody I told you, piece of Joe. if you want a piece of Joe, you got to beat me. You can't. Mm -hmm. And I just you gave a you a second me? opportunity. So many people want a shot at this belt, and we're giving you a second opportunity. Triple threat. You, me, Shell. Tomorrow night. No, I'll, I'll pass. <sighs> oh, Frog, I'm shocked. That was your shot. That was your chance on to monetize the I want. I out. want Joe's belt. And this was a way to get Joe's belt. I, Bullfrog, I hope you die in a campfire accident. Okay? I can't spell it out any more than this. Christ. You <laughs> fucking <retard. laughs> That's the best Take thing I've ever done. Bullfrog, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Joe, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you just burnt whatever brain cells I had left from this day, Bullfrog, and there were not many. And people say, how many survive? Jake, uh, you, don't, you, you don't have those brain cells. You, you got chromosomes. Uh, oh my god. What? Oh You got chromosomes, Jake. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, oh Jeremiah, how many do you have, hon? Too many. Uh I lost the count. Yeah. I bet it's going higher and higher, uh, isn't it? Listen, we'll see you guys tomorrow night for out of nowhere. Me and Jake will be here at eleven PM Eastern time and I'll have some. I'm on your day. fucking belt, Joe. Alright, baby. Trust. You coward. I hung up on Bullfrog. Goodbye, Bullfrog. Thank you to Rosario. Like Shell's coming after the belt then. Maybe yeah, there's sure, still be a triple not? threat. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Man but versus woman. Night, out of nowhere. We got predictions for Fastlane tomorrow. We'll talk about the WrestleMania tickets on pre-sale. I'm trying to get the JCS community another pre-sale code to see if that works. The one I was given didn't work, so that sucked. But we'll let you know more about ticket times, what's going on with Peacock, and how their live network is going to be working and things being transferred over there with new content and previous content. A lot of stuff to update you on. AEW plans. It's going to be a hell of a night. Don't miss it. All right. Oh, Joe. Yo, quickly. Restava. Yo, real quick. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be five years since I've been listening to you and watching you since Fastlane 2016. Damn. Wow. That was when, when are you gonna? When are you gonna put back the uh, the uh, the episode or the, uh, the 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 podcast that you did after 2016? Did you get flagged for that video or? I don't know what you're talking about. No, the, the review that you did in 2016 of Fastlane where uh, it was the match where, like, Roman oh. was, like, in a triple threat with, like, Brock and somebody else. I think Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, and he wasn't, like, selling any of the chair shots or something of that nature. You just, like, blew up. That was, like, my favorite review. I don't did. remember what happened, but I'll try to look I it up. I think that one got taken down due to something inside of it. And I'll look ah. it I'll, I, I'll look it up and, and try to figure out what it was, and if I can get it up, I'll put it up or figure out what it is. Or just send it to me. Just send it to me. I won't yeah. even repost it. Just send it no, to I'll me. I'll put it on. I'll even, if it's nothing big deal, like, I'll put it on my website. Like, just so you can watch it, download it, whatever. I don't, yeah. Yeah, don't no, because, dude, that was so funny. Dude, you did, you, <laughs> dude, you, like, egged on. Because I think everybody was, like, canceled the network. And that was, like, the first time that phrase was really ever used. Yeah. I snapped so, about I how it's it's only it. nine bucks. What the hell is it? Right. I don't remember why I flipped out, but I'm sure it was No, no, you like, flipped out because of the main event. That's why. Oh, okay. Because of the lack of selling, all the chair shots and everything. I remember that with that match. 
and then I think you did like the Enzo cast theme and you were like parodying Enzo or whatever you were doing. I don't remember, but I think that was like what I thought you might have gotten striked because of that. But again, no, maybe I, I think it might have been might have been the music. Theme. Yeah, that could have been it. Could have been the music. If it wasn't that, I'll figure out what it was. Bada bing, smallest deep in the ring. How you doing? <laughs> Is that what I said? Yes, you oh, did. Man. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks for stopping, Michelle, and everybody else who called. And shout out to. Thanks, Joe. I love you guys. You're the best. Good night, everybody. Mwah. Salad of our lives. Stay sexy, everybody. <laughs> Check it out on uh, Patreon. We Thank got a guys. bunch of stuff. Good night. Mustafa. La, la, la. Um, what up, everybody? And big shout out to the top donator, Ryan, man. $200. Ryan. Ryan. With $200. He is the top dog of the night. That was crazy, man. We had a couple of hundy bombs, two hundy bombs, and tons of other bombs, uh, little uh, drops that were big. Thank you guys so much for making this night insane. Love y'all. You guys can download the, the Ryback rap on Patreon as well. That's up there. Me and Jake. 30-minute podcast after that. And more coming this week. And shout out to the producers. And Ryan. Yeah. Leave a like. And if you're new, subscribe so you get more content every single day. And I'll take my pants off for you. The women nailed it tonight for AEW. Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker setting the bar high for the women this year so far in a fiery, hellacious, hardcore, lights out AEW match on Dynamite tonight. Thumbs up for me. Day.